Dad, I'm Greg from Grand Teton Harley-Davidson here with Dan. It's been a while, Dan, since we caught up, but uh, Mint 400 was last time our, our team saw you, and uh, you're currently riding your Pan America on the Pan America Trail all the way down to Patagonia. Currently, I'm on my chopper. Right? Well, you're on your chopper. Yeah, we're in Sturgis. <laughs> But your Pan America is somewhere down in South America it's right now. It's in Quito, Ecuador right now. I hope it's safe. I hope it's safe when I get back. Anyway, tell me about the trip. I mean, we're here in Sturgis, so tell me what you're doing here in Sturgis. This is an annual event for you, and then maybe we can transition over to Pan America. Yeah, and Sturgis is... <clears throat> I honestly, I told my wife I wasn't coming this year. I was like, you know, I've been traveling a lot, out of the country, back and forth. I'm not gonna like fly back from South America to see my family and then leave to go to Sturgis. Uh, but here I am at Sturgis. So you're Pan America. Uh, last time we talked, you were telling me it was your first new motorcycle ever you bought. <clears throat> yeah. And it, you immediately went down and put flames on it, which is rad. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Chemical Candy Customs. Chemical Candy did that. <clears throat> I ran into the truck. Oh! You know, the first, you know, on the way to Sturgis last year, I did the BDR. I took it, to, actually Memorial Day weekend, I took it to uh, Red River and like, you know, that was when I like tried to figure out if this thing was going to be able to power me through the shit that I wanted to take it through. And it did great, you know? And then I I did the BDR to Sturgis and on after Sturgis, I rode through Idaho and really, really put it to the test before, on the way to see you guys. I remember that. I mean, you were showing me a picture of you coming down this like fallen timbers trail. And yeah, I was like, Corduroy Road. A and rock slide <clears throat> yeah and it just did it fine like and i know i asked you like what happens if you fall down and like impale yourself on a road like this because you're out there by yourself yeah i don't this think by about yourself. those things you just go greg you can't if you think <laughs> about those things you won't do anything yeah you can't yeah i don't know well and because of that i think you've pushed your pan america harder than anybody else i mean obviously they're out there more widely now but you know, I see these pictures of you on the Pan America Trail now and just kind of doing things that people haven't done yet, being a, you know, doing doing first, so. Yeah, doing things that people haven't done yet. I was in Guatemala or someplace, and I call up my local shop, Brown Cycles, and this old man, Red Eye, answers the phone. And there is no, like, how you doing, what's up? He goes, Dan, you're not supposed to ride an unproven motorcycle out of the country. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, how, how's it going to get proven if somebody doesn't take it out of the country? Right. And he just, you know, didn't even register. But, uh, yeah, so that trip, this trip has evolved. I did not plan on doing the Pan America Highway. There was a race back in 2020 called the Mezcal Moto Rally. And I built the sports, the sports track first race the Mint with. I built it to race the Mint, and then I was going to do the Mezcal Moto Rally. And as we all know, the fucking world shut down. Yeah. Like, the weekend I was in Vegas. So that race got canceled. And then fast forward a couple of years, I, I got a real adventure bike, you know, the Pan America. And the race came back up and I was like, you know, I'm gonna take the Pan America on the Mezcal Motor Rally, right? A race from Austin, Texas to Oaxaca, Mexico. I mean, it was so rad. Like the guy putting it on Nick, he's a, uh, he imports stuff out of Mexico. He's like got a tile plant, makes, makes building products, but yeah. rides his bike back and forth a lot. And just wanted to share the experiences that he's encountered while traveling in Mexico and open up the door to people who haven't traveled internationally to, to cross that border. So he put together a race and had like, you know, different <clears throat> like challenges each day to get people to like get outside their comfort zone and experience things that, you know, it took him years of traveling to, to go through. And, uh, I really went there with the intention of winning. I was like, dude, I'm going to eat all these dudes. <laughs> and uh, that's not what happened. No. Because <clears throat> I just like created so many more challenges for myself along the way because it's kind of just how I roll. Right. And, uh, and so, so to prepare for this trip, <clears throat> I'm like, what, you know, what do I do to my chopper? I put tires on it. Yeah. In a battery, you know, start with a fresh battery and tires before yeah. I go on a trip. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> apparently I put the front tire on wrong. And I didn't I didn't go to Harley. I didn't come to you and say, yeah. hey, what tires should I get? No, I'm like, look at the internet. I buy some adventure tires. I go buy a battery from batteries and bulbs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those two things are like the biggest hindrance of my whole trip. You know, like 
I put the tires on myself and I did it wrong. The front wheel was on the wrong way. The thing was in limp mode, right? As soon as I leave my house, the bike just starts acting up. For the first time <laughs> in the whole year, I've been doing, I've been abusing this motorcycle and I leave for the biggest trip that I've done on it. And it's throwing it's, codes it's in limp it. mode, throwing <laughs> codes at me. I'm like, what the? No. But I just kept riding it. I'm like, if this were to happen, you know, in Mexico, what am I going to do? I'm going to ride Gotta through it. So out. like, yeah. just, I just figured I'd ride through the codes and just see, and it just kept going. It's not like it, it didn't stop running. It didn't, you know, which was good. Cause I wanted to know, like, would this thing leave me stranded if something happened in it? And anyways, it kept riding, went, went to a, a dealership right before I got into Mexico and I had them run the code, see if there's anything they could do to help. And of course they're like, yeah, this thing's got a lot of codes, a lot of stuff coming from your right hand. And I'm like, well, don't worry about that. <laughs> you know, I hit a truck. That'll be, you know, it's been like this for a while. So I assumed that I put on these tires that the computer was like not reading correctly. Yeah. I didn't think for a second that I put the wheel on backwards. Like that never even crossed my mind. Right. But did so, the dealership figure that out? No. What, well, I didn't let them. Yeah, oh, gotcha. they wanted. I was like, I'm in a race, dude. You guys can't take my bike apart. I'm just plug it in, see what the codes are. Is it, you know, is the motor fixing to blow up? <laughs> no. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. You know, I'll ride it in limo. So I rode it in limo the whole race, uh, made it to Oaxaca, and, you know, I I uh, I just enjoyed the yeah that like, what was cool about that race was like riding with 15, 16 other people on different bikes. Every morning we all go our separate ways, have crazy experiences, and then meet back up at night and then talk about it. like enjoy each other's company, hear what the other people went through, tell them what you went through. Some of it was the same, some of it was different. And you know, it was it was really cool. Like I knew I was gonna enjoy that race, but like, you know, riding with these other people that were outside of the realm of, you know, the people that I've traveled with or even entertained with in on in motorcycles. Period. They were just. And where did some of these people come from? Are they U.S. based, Mexico, or all just over all over the country? Place? Yeah, the the guy who won it, he's like a, an, a computer. What is he? He designs apps. Like he specifically, he just won a big award from Apple for designing an app, like a f a photography app to make your phone more like a, an old camera. You know, like, you know, from California. There's people from Austin, Colorado. And I was obviously the only person on a Pan America, but there was one other guy on a Harley or maybe two on like baggers. And then there was a Triumph, some BMWs, a Yamaha, you know, just it's a good mix, a good mix. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, dude, that I was... bet they're pretty excited to see a Harley there or, no. or, well, or perplexed a little bit. Right. No, <laughs> like, well, what is this thing? They kept, they wanted to know what bike I was going to ride. I kept toy. I kept telling them I was going to ride my chopper, you know, just to, because I knew they wanted me to ride the Pan America. They wanted that bike on the yeah. trip, right? They're like, because yeah. the bike's badass. You know, right. like, if they're going to create content, like, what better way to have a flamed out Pan America on video? And so I kept telling them, no, I'm going to ride my chopper because that's pretty sweet on video, too. Uh, so, yeah, I showed up on that, and they were stoked. But the race was, it was awesome. And we all made it to Oaxaca. Everybody made it. My buddy Rob rode, like, a vintage like a GS rally or something. It's just uh, a sweet old 80s era. Dude, it was so sick. But he got fucking lost. He ended up in a parade. <laughs> <Did he really? laughs> well, those are the stories at night, right? When people come Exactly. Back, yeah. So we're telling these stories at night and all of a sudden I realized, I'm like, where the fuck is Rob at? And everyone's like, I don't know. He hadn't made it yet. And I'm like, why are we hanging out? <laughs> Rob is lost. We're deep in Mexico and nobody's talked to him. So I start trying to like, rally up a team to go find them you know now this is after the mezcal has been flowing you know yeah. like, as soon as you get yes. to these parties at night everybody's really excited <laughs> and uh, i'm like all right we got to find them so i i uh these the one of the challenges of the last night was bring a chicken to the party bring a chicken yeah like a dead chicken no or real, a real chicken, chicken. Oh, okay. so <laughs> so two of these overachievers they they got some chicken so i'm down in the lobby a car shows up with a bunch of chickens. They're taking them to the party. And I'm like, you know. Give me a chicken? No. I'm like, <laughs> hey, you got a car. Let's go find Rob. We don't need oh, to be gotcha. riding our motorcycles <laughs> under the influence of Mezcal. So as I'm like, you know, arranging this, you know, they don't speak English. I don't speak Spanish. So I'm like having to, it was a, it was a job. Then Rob pulls up. And like 10 o'clock at night, 
tells us about the parade. I was just so stoked that he made it. That's awesome. But the race was awesome. And, uh, you know, I got some things going on back home. Uh, you know, some ideas, some business ventures that I'd like to toy with. And uh, one of my friends, uh, an amazing outlaw, like a world-renowned outlaw chef, has a restaurant back home that my wife used to work at when I met her. And he lives in Costa Rica now. And I looked at the map, and I'm like, well, Hawka is halfway to Costa Rica. I would really like to go talk to this guy in person instead of call him up. Yeah. Just to get some advice and some, you know, I wanted his support and some things I want to do. And uh, I should have told my wife before I left home <laughs> yeah. that I wasn't going to That stop. you were going to keep going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I called her up. I'm like, hey, you know, I got to go visit Terry. Terry's in Costa Rica, and she kind of lost her like, it's only like four countries or three countries I got to go through. It's not that big of a deal. You know, what's crazy is I told her, you know, I've talked about doing this trip for a long time. Like, even when I was going to do it on the sports trip, I'm like, you know, I got a friend in Panama. I want to go see him. And <clears throat> But looking at the logistics of traveling through Central America, it was, I, you know, I would talk to her about it and like how not smart it is to go through there. Like, yeah. it's just like. It's dangerous right now. In a it, lot of those countries, it's, right? That's among other things. Yeah. Yes, it's just like well, for a whole host of reasons. Like there's dangerous people, but environment, all the the situations. Types of, there's no yeah. like call the cops if something happens, and there's no call. There's no support down there. Like right. it's just not. So <clears throat> I think that's really one of the main reasons that this trip happened was it was kind of spur of the moment, like last minute. All right, I'm going to go see Terry. Yeah, like there was a mission. It yeah. wasn't like. Well, I'm, I'm just going to go gonna, ride the trail. I'm not just going to go through the f***ing countries of Central America. So anyways, yeah, I decided to go to Costa Rica and see Terry. And uh, I went half the distance in three days. Wow. Right? Like from my house to Oaxaca. So I'm like, I'm going to do that in three days. I didn't account for like border crossings. Right. And it being Easter week, which is like their biggest traveling holiday and everybody's just on vacation and the borders are fucking slammed with people <laughs> so i left oaxaca and that was probably one of the better parts of mexico was leaving oaxaca and going south to chiapas and it was just like just fields of uh agave plants and but it's beautiful yeah you know and i i got this drone i'm like oh my god this would be such great place but i'm like what if I see something I'm not supposed to see? And then somebody sees that copter flying around the or the camera on it. Oh, they're going to come find you. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> I was just like, you know, there's so many opportunities to fly that thing. But I'm like, I can't do it in Mexico. There's like, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like disrespectful too, like flying it in a place that I'm not familiar with. Right. Like, like, I'm, like I'm spying, which is kind of funny as this story progresses uh, <laughs> but so i yeah i get out of there and you know i uh i didn't prepare at all for the border crossings i didn't have like the paperwork i needed i didn't know what i needed yeah it's like i just had your passport i had my passport and i had my my motorcycle registration oh i had my title too i didn't know that for the first two border crossings I thought I left my title at home because why would you bring your title right. to your motorcycle? I don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I get to the first crossing in, in Guatemala. And it was, you know, it was relatively easy. I didn't have any help. I'm, I, you know, talking to the people at the booth, there was military there to standing outside where I was able to park my bike. I had to walk into Guatemala to find money. Oh, that's funny. So, so... I needed to get a money. I had to go exchange money in Guatemala to get their money to pay these people. For so they let you in to get the money, and then they had to come back out. Well, so I, getting the passport was easy, right? Yeah. So I get my passport. But to get my vehicle uh, imported, I had to get some other oh, gotcha. paperwork done. So, yeah, I was able to walk in there, and uh, I'm looking for this place. They said, yeah, it's right over there to exchange money. So I go, I go right over there. And this is like a bustling little area. And there's like a, it's like a drive-through garage area. Like, like it looks like a mechanic shop, but there's a couple of desks in there and some ladies. Yeah. I walk in there and uh, I see these ladies in these desks. And I'm like, this is obviously not it. And I keep going and 
walk around the corner and I find like a security guard and like a bank. I'm like, oh, this is it. This guy's got a machine gun. He's guarding the money. Yeah. Go in there. They're like, no, this isn't it. And I go to a couple other places and they're like, no, no, go back to that spot. So I go back to this giant garage with two open doors and these pretty ladies sitting at desks that are like, it's like a desk like that. There's no structure around it. Yeah. And I'm like, do I exchange money here? And this lady pulls out of her desk this wad of cash. <laughs> and I'm like, sure enough, that's... what was the guy guarding with the gun down the street? You know, and these ladies are just out in the open with all this cash. So yeah, I got my money. Got in and got into the country. And Guatemala was insane. The whole, the whole country, all the way through it. And, you know, I'm going to see Terry. I'm not like, I'm not joyriding. So I just like go straight down the road and it's just and bumper to bumper traffic and i'm like there's so many motorcycles we're just splitting lanes sometimes i forget how big my bike is because i'm right. following a 250 through traffic or a little scooter <laughs> yeah I mean, whatever it is yeah and you know blast through guatemala it was you know that was probably one of the more hectic places to go through um i stopped and got some guatemala coffee yeah that was amazing good stuff yeah, yeah it was great and it was hectic just because of the people the traffic, like just traffic no, that, and people the traffic are, yeah. the, that traffic was probably the most hectic out of it, you know. Well, I rode through Mexico City, so I don't, you know, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. Yeah. Mexico <laughs> City was nuts. Yeah. Have you been to Mexico City? Yeah, no, but I've seen pictures. That city video. is huge. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I gotta tell you about that. So I'm going through Mexico City. <clears throat> and uh I I'm it's they specifically said in this booklet from the Mezcal Motor Rally, don't go through Mexico City. Like, but you're like, I'm go, going there. But I'm like, it's a Sunday. Yeah. When am I ever like? Sunday seems like a good time to go through there. There's not as much traffic, anyways. So I look at the map. I'm like, all right, if I go through here and then go over here, I just go straight through the city, and I'm, you know, just two highways. Yeah. And as you're familiar with the fucking GPS system on these Pan Americas, it's not, it's not even no worth. Good. With. No, it's not it's even no good. so i'm wearing that vest i just keep my phone handy and i pull it out and look at it and uh, oh but i'm running i got a climb helmet that i'm running now one of the carbon fibers one it's great yeah but i got the the cardo in my ears yeah so i'll plug the gps on my phone up and let it tell me what to do in my ears yeah which works great in america yeah because it's in english right when you get to mexico and that thing's talking in Spanish. To me. Well, no, it's talking to me in English, but the signs are. So it's like. Oh, I was going to say, like, boy, no. I, it converts over to Spanish. No. Wait a minute. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Maybe that would be easier. But when it <laughs> talks to me in Spanish, I can relate like... those words to the signs. <laughs> there you go. But when it talks to you in English, and then you see the signs, and it's like. Don't and, know what that means. So I, I'm going into Mexico City, and it, it, it's a huge highway. I mean, like five, six lanes. And. Uh, I just, I just go into this big city and it just gets, it's just huge. There's crazy big buildings. The architecture is just, you know, it's, it's just different. It's so different. And it was so clean. Like literally the city just see, like when I ride through Fort Worth now, I am fucking disappointed. Cause you're like, this is not Mexico city. No. Cause it's dirty. <laughs> like there's just trash. Yeah. Like there wasn't, there wasn't any of that. It Mexico was city. no, like there was a couple of spots, but like, you take the main highway through Fort Worth, and it's like there's fucking trash on the side of the road. This fucking road through Mexico City, it was just beautiful. Yeah. My like, gosh. So, anyways, I'm like, there's like highways upon highways down there, toll roads on the highways. Like, literally, there's highways running onto like one of, I don't even know how it works, right? Yeah. So, you run into a little bit of traffic. I just, you know, the, the GPS figures out what you need to do after you make a mistake, right? So I would like avoid traffic and go this way and go that way. I literally went through Mexico City just zigzagging. I feel like I like I would get, get off one highway and then go this way and then go back this way and then go back this way. And, and I got to see a lot of it. And it was so rad. Like, and there were so many bikes. They just weren't on the highway with me. Like yeah. I could just see them all. But like That's they cool. were smart enough to not be on the highway. <laughs> They're on the little side the roads. traffic was <laughs> crazy uh, but i made it out of mexico city and uh okay so yeah back to guatemala so you that zip, was a zip two through lane, it yeah it was two lane road and it was it was pretty hectic like riding splitting lanes riding on the shoulder pretty much anything goes down there i mean i don't know if the cops agree with that but 
everybody rides like they, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter. And uh, what's the next border? Oh, so the next border is El Salvador. Uh, but I got a good friend named Rob Rouser, <clears throat> and uh, he works at Biltwell, and he lives in Panama. And he's done this trip on a bike before, so he gave me a bunch of good insight. And uh, he, I guess he wasn't paying attention either to what was going on in El Salvador. Because I showed up after finding out later, like nine days after the cartels, the like MS-13 or whatever it is, shot like 80-something people sporadically around the country wow. and then they can shut it down and just started throwing everybody if you had a 13 tattoo it didn't matter if oliver pet gave it to you on friday the 13th you're going to in jail. prison yeah they just cleared the country out um but i get to el salvador and that was like the first border where i'm like you know what do i do and there happens to be a guy standing there and he's like you need help and i'm like sure and you and i've read on the forums like don't use these people to like, don't, they want money to help you out. Like don't pay. They'll them. take your bike. <laughs> no, they just say. They just you, want you, money. They just want money. Yeah. And I'm like, well, by myself, if I can pay this guy $10 to stand by my bike and not take anything. Yeah. It's worth it. It's worth every penny. Yeah. Like I'll give him a lot more than that, but yeah. he wanted $10. So I'm like, you know, and he, he showed me what, you know, cause it's not like as simple as. Go to this building, get your passport stamp, get your vehicle import permit, and then you leave. No, it's like, go to this building, get your passport stamped, and then come over here and, like, get your vehicle and sprayed with the fumes, and then go over here and buy insurance, and then go over here and get your permit. And, and so it's you get just, passed around. And the, yeah, there's no signs. Like, there's literally no signs for this. <laughs> it's just like, go to this shack and pay this lady who's got a notebook. Yeah. And you're like... Really? But Where's yeah, the shack? You really yeah, it's do. over there. You really do. So, anyways, I, this guy, I'm like, he helps me out. He he makes the process go very smoothly, and like, and tells me what's going on instead of like me waiting at the window wondering if they're really doing what they're supposed to. He's like, yeah, you know, it was nice. So he's like, hey man, I got somebody that can help you out at the Honduras border. I'm like. Perfect. Great, dude. <laughs> Look at my bike. That's what I'll be on when I get there. You know, tell them. And uh, so I ride through El Salvador, and that was another wild deal. <clears throat> so I didn't plan on going into El Salvador that day because I was like, I want to do it first thing in the morning. But then, you know, going through that traffic in Guatemala, next thing you know, I'm at the border. Yeah. And it's like 5 o'clock. Oh, I can get through. Well, that it took it took a while. Now it's dark, entering El Salvador, and there's a lot of trucks trying to come out, you know. But they kind of I think they have to stop or whatever it is. When I take off into El Salvador, it was dark, and I had an hour to go, like to get to this hotel that my buddy told me about. And there's traffic, just eighteen wheelers lined up on this side of the road going to Guatemala. And I'm in this lane. And it was the craziest ride ever because these 18 wheelers are like passing each other. Like once I get past all the traffic, now they're like Hello. fighting to get up front. I remember going down the road and an 18 wheeler is like passing another 18 wheeler. So I get over to the shoulder and there's a dude on a pedal bike on the shoulder. I'm like, <laughs> are you kidding me right now? And I'm like, so I split a pedal bike on the shoulder and two 18 wheelers on wow. a road that's and it's dark and it's dark. And that ride through El Salvador is just nuts. Like riding at night, I try not to do it. Yeah. Like I literally, like there's, I just try not to do it. You yeah, know? I'm the same way. I don't like it. Like there's no especially need for unfamiliar it. familiar territory, right? Like the third world country. Yeah, yeah. They don't even care about you. Yeah, <laughs> like they tell those. They paint the front of them so that you will stay away from them. They're like intimidating. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, but you made it to the hotel. I made it to the hotel. Yeah, and it was the hotel was sick, dude. They had a fucking pool. Nice. It was it was awesome. They had like a courtyard to like, you know, lock your bike in the gate, and and uh, they wouldn't let me do that. No, they were like, no, you have to park your bike on the street. Uh oh. I'm like, <laughs> you have a giant courtyard with a gate. In a pool, like I could park over there on the rocks. It's not like I'm going to leak oil. This isn't my chopper. Right. And they literally were like, no, the owner will not let you do that. I wanted to leave so bad. 
<laughs> but I just didn't know where to go. Right. Where else am I going to find a place at that time of night? So, you know, oh, dude, this place, this fucking place. So I get, I get my room, and there's this hallway. Have you seen like bad taxidermy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. This place was decorated with the worst taxidermy, <laughs> but not as like it wasn't like check out our bad taxidermy collection. It was just like that was what was on the walls. Like it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. You got, so Jack, next morning, you got jackalopes? No, like no, this was like <laughs> no what I'm saying, like just poorly done. Really poorly yeah. done. And I don't know if it was just old, I don't know. It was weird. So I'm thinking my bike is definitely not gonna be outside in the morning. And uh and it was. That's it was. great. Yeah, it was great. So the ride through El Salvador was sick. Like this road just like goes along the ocean. <clears throat> There's like caves that you're riding through you're on cliffs you can see people surfing down below and uh, this is when i found out that it was a holiday weekend because the traffic as i kept going south just started building and building and there's people just set up you know what's crazy all through mexico and central america you're like riding down the road and you know like a kid sets up a lemonade stand in the neighborhood right yeah they do that like not even kids like Grown people are like, I'm going to set up on the side of the highway where everybody's going 80 miles an hour. Maybe somebody will break down. Maybe somebody will just decide to pull off. And, and I guess they food or drink. Yeah, or, I guess yeah. they do. They're like bags of chips just hanging on the side of the highway. Where you're going 80 miles <laughs> an hour, there's a bag of chips. I, I don't know how. It's weird. But I kept seeing more and more of them pop up. Bam, there's a lot of traffic. I finally stopped and talked to somebody like, oh, it's Easter weekend. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I guess that's a thing. And make it through El Salvador, I get, did I stay in El Oh, I stayed one night in El Salvador at the at, that night, and then I made it through, uh, what's after El Salvador? Honduras. Honduras. So there's people waiting there, right? Two guys that knew the guy from the first stop. Yeah. And they were super nice. Like, and, you know, I get to the border, and at every border there's, like, lines of 18-wheelers, like, Trip, you know, just waiting to move through there. Waiting to get through yeah. there. So, I, you know, you just go around them. You don't stop for anything. You don't have to stop for nothing in Central America. Yeah. Really, you don't have to stop for anything anywhere. Uh, so, I'm going around, and this is the first time I saw these people, like, like fighting to get to me. Like, people trying to help. They're, like, jumping out in front of me, waving their hands, like, I'm here. I want to help you. I want to help you cross. You know, it was like, it was crazy. They're, like, chasing me down. And yeah. I just... I go all the way to the front, and I'm like, you know, how do I know who this guy is? Right. And sure enough, dude, the first guy walks up. He tells me, hey, you're friends with Jorge. And I'm like, holy shit. He's like, right. He found me. <laughs> I mean, I rode to him. Like, he was, That's awesome. out of all those people, you know, that were, you know, I, I could have thought maybe the guy that jumped out in front of me waving his arm. That, that was him. That yeah. could have been, but no, yeah. I rode right to him. So these guys, uh, one of them speaks English, and I don't know if the other guy, he had a shirt on him. There were some people with shirts on that, like, maybe you were official. I don't know. And uh, anyways, they're helping me out. And this border was slammed with people. Slammed with people. I have to go in this room. No AC. Oh, and there was no. like a hundred of us. And the line is zigzags like that. And I got my helmet. Hot and humid. And the guys, they were like, hey, we need your title. And we need your registration. And I'm like, fuck, you know, here you here you go. Well, that's when I found out I had my title. I didn't think I had it, but I did. I stashed it in there. So I found it on my pack. And I'm in this line, just sweating, like just sweating. You know, and I and I I can't, I've I've been there for a while. There's like 30 people behind me. There's like 50 people in front of me. And I'm like, I just gave my motorcycle title to some dudes I've never met before. <laughs> and I, my motorcycle is just out there. Right. Parked amongst like all this shit happening. And I just like, I started sweating even more. <laughs> now I'm like, I text the guy that has WhatsApp. I'm like, dude, just come back in here with all my paperwork right now. Like I, I just, I just need it. Right. So he comes in and you're like, Hey, Hey bud, here it is. It's okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like we're, we, we're, we're doing the, the vehicle process. While you're waiting in line to get your passport. Yeah. And he was, you know, as genuine and as cool about it as could be. I'm like, okay, so, 
yeah. I mean, what else do I do here? Like, yeah. you just got to trust him. That's it. Yeah. I just have to trust him. So I finally get to like the front of the line and these old ladies come in. And now, now this building's over 100 degrees. Everybody in there is sweating. I'm, they are following me around with a mop. This is not a joke. <laughs> Literally, there's somebody with a mop behind me, mopping my <laughs> up. And uh, these old ladies come in, like old ladies. And, uh, and they cut in line. I mean, I'm, uh, yes, go, please. Yeah. You do not yeah. need to wait in this line. Sure. The people behind me lose their shit, like start yelling and screaming because these people cut in line. <laughs> I'm like, and, and they're yelling at the ladies and they're yelling at me because I let them do this. Right. And I'm like, they're old ladies. Let them go through. What? Yeah. <laughs> like, of course. Like, I'm not going to, not going to make these ladies wait in this building. Like, oh, it was wild. So I, I could, could finally, bam, I get that stamp and I'm like, oh. I walk out the door and I'm like, is my motorcycle going to be here? Yeah. I go out there. There it is. There's the guy smoking a cigarette standing got next the to me. Everything's gun. there. My fucking tank bag. Got your title bag. You got. No. No. Oh, uh oh. No, just be patient. <laughs> no. He's standing at my motorcycle's there. Okay. That's it. Okay. So I go there. I'm like, all right, I got the deal. What's up with the other thing? He's like, oh, the other guy, he's working on your stuff. And I'm like, where's he at? He's like, he's in, it's in that same building, but it's a different window. So I go in there and he's, and it, sure enough, he's standing there. The lady's at the computer on the other side of the window. <clears throat> and, and that window is covered in stickers from people doing this trip, getting their motorcycle imports. So there's just like stickers from all these riding clubs or, you know, just travelers that sure. have stickers. And I'm like, I'm going to go get my sticker. So I go outside, get a sticker, come back in, put it on the window. I'm like, Psh. <laughs> and I see my title, my inspection or my registration, <clears throat> my driver's license, like all my paperwork on her desk. And he's like, you know, I'm just waiting here. You can go outside. I'm like, awesome. I want to get out of this hot building. So I go back out there, sit next to the guy. Now we're both smoking a cigarette. We're just chilling, just like watching all this crazy shit that's happening at the border. And, and then the guy gets a phone call. He gets his phone. Then he gets a little like riled up. I don't know what he's saying. He's talking in Spanish. And then he looks at me and goes, Do you have your driver's license? I'm like, No. It's I down there. Yeah, give it to that guy. Like they have it in there. And he goes, He hangs the phone. He's like, no problem. Don't worry about it. Now I'm worried about it. You know, like, yeah. you just asked me, like, <laughs> which you guys are supposed to have this. And uh, he gets another phone call. Talking, talking, talking. Double check all your pockets for your driver's license. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, yeah. I'll t I, and I checked. I'm like, sure. Yeah, I could definitely lose yeah. things. You know, so I check everything. I'm trying not to get too excited. And uh, and he goes, all right, well, so they, they don't know where your driver's license is at. And I'm like, what, what the f do you mean they don't know where my driver's license is? like, well, they don't. You know, my guy's saying that the lady lost it. And I'm like... This is this is when things got everything was everything was working out so good until yeah. this point. Yeah. Where they're like, we don't know where your driver's license is. I'm like, it's not like I'm just on the other side of the Mexico border. Right. You know, like right. I just cross Mexico and El Salvador, and now I'm at the I'm already clocked out of El Salvador. Right. You're I need a driver's this. license to even go back into El Salvador. Yeah. Now they're telling me they don't have it. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? So then the guy comes out. And he's got all my paperwork. He got the vehicle imported. He's got my registration. He's got my title. But he doesn't have my driver's license. And, I, and I'm like, are you? And he has to have my driver's license to get this paperwork. Yeah. So we're all on the same page. Like, you've had it. They gave you the paperwork. That means they had the ID. Like, they, they don't, they got to have that. Yeah. And uh, so now I'm like, what the? How do I even keep going? Like, I can't cross the next border without a driver's license. So I call up my buddy, Terry, in Costa Rica, and I'm like, dude, you know, this is what happened. And he's like, yeah, welcome to Central America. Like, 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 yeah. like it was, yeah, like totally, it happens, right? totally <laughs> normal that they lost your shit. I'm like, okay, Terry, I don't feel that comfortable about this. What should I do now? He's like, go to the police station and get a police report filed. That way you have paperwork saying that your driver's license was lost. I'm like... Okay, that makes sense. So I tell these guys, hey, I want to go to the police station. Will you help me translate the, you know, I need a police report. So we go to the police station and it's, uh, you know, it's just two dudes. They're literally just kicked back playing on their phones. 
I'm like, okay, cool. So my guy tells him what's going on. Well, what does he tell him? I don't know. At this point, I'm still like, yeah. do you guys have it? Are you waiting for a bribe or something? Yeah, do you need so, 20 bucks? Or? Yeah, I offered him a lot more than that. <laughs> and uh, so they're talking to him. And, they, and I'm like, you know, tell him to make a police report. And he goes, hey, man, uh, he said he can't make a police report because the electricity's out. <laughs> And they have those strings on their AC. Yeah. They're wavy. That AC is pumping. Right. The electricity is on. Yeah. So now I'm like, okay, so this guy's lying to me. You know, yeah. like, that's my first thought. This guy is foolish. So I'm like, let's go outside. Well, $100 make my driver's license appear. You know, like, yeah. He's like, no, no. I'm like, well, $200 make my driver's <laughs> license appear. He's like, no, dude, like, literally, these ladies lost it. So I'm like, all right, let's go back in here. So we go back into the police station. I'm like, you know, can you write me out something? Do you have a piece of paper to write me something? He's like, no, you got to go to the next town to that police station. And I'm like, you know, what do, what do I do? Yeah, yeah, what do I do? I, yeah. I wanted to hit every one of those guys in the face. <laughs> right. You know, like, like the nerves are really high. So I'm like, okay, all right. So I, that's, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys for your help. And they're like, all right, but you still got to pay us. And I'm like, okay, okay. how much money do you need? And they're like, well, it costs $130 to do all the paperwork. But, you know, you need to pay us another 50 bucks, and then a tip would be nice. And I'm like, what the fuck is the 50 bucks? You yeah. know, like, yeah, that's right. What are we, what are we doing here? <laughs> and, I'm, and they're like, hey, and we got somebody else that will help you out when you go into Nicaragua. And you're going to need them because you don't have a driver's license. Ah, and I'm like, and you're like, wait a second. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Here's your money. I don't want to go to Nic the Nicaragua border and have some guys angry with me because I didn't pay their buddies, right? right. So this is when it starts escalating. And I don't have a driver's license. So I, I pay him off. I'm like, you know, and really, if it costs a hundred dollars for the insurance and the like that didn't seem out of line. Yeah. Whether it costs that much, I don't know. And then another 30 bucks for them to watch my bike. While I waited, or fifty bucks to watch my bike while I was in that building, like yeah. I didn't even feel like I was getting, you know, I didn't feel like I was getting taken. Yeah, you know, like yeah. The cost of fucking traveling. Yeah, in Central America, but the driver's license thing was seemed suspicious. Sure, but they were cool. I, I mean, if they were going to take something from me, they had my title and my motorcycle. Right. Like, I didn't feel like they were. They, I don't. I really don't feel like they took it. Or lost my license on purpose. Like right. this was an honest mistake. Yeah, and that's how I felt leaving there. But I still had to go to the police station because I wanted paperwork to go on. So right, I leave this border crossing, and this is when things. And I'm already riled up, like I'm flustered, and I don't know. You know, I can't do anything with this energy because I, I thought you the, the guys yourself. were doing me yeah. right. But I got to go forward. So I leave this place, like five miles out of town. I come around this curve, and there's like. 15, 20 people in this mob. They're all dressed in black from one side of the road to the other, like all the way across. They've all got on rubber Halloween masks. Oh, no. With sticks in their hands, and they're beating a truck that's pulling through the mob. Like, and I'm just like, uh oh. <laughs> and when I called my buddy in Costa Rica at the border, and he was like, yeah, no biggie. And they, they lost your driver's license. That's how it is. He's like, you know, being in Central America is kind of like a nightmare, an anxiety nightmare that you just live through. Yeah. And then I get to this point and I'm like, I, is this really a dream? Like, is right. this, like, I, am I seeing this it was, right now? It was so much to take in. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm not gonna, I can't pull over and like talk to these people. Right. I'm not gonna like, like, I'm not gonna turn around and go back to the porter where the cops are like, right. We can't help you. Right. The electricity's off. Like, Right. So I just can twist that throttle. Fucking right raise through. a wheelie and go straight through the middle. Of the <laughs> One dude fucking trips and falls trying to get out of the way. And I and I and they all turn and look at me too. Like when I fucking revved it up and the motor bay noise, all of these Halloween masks just turn. Oh, that'd be surreal. <laughs> oh, it's insane. You know why? Because what stuck out was Donald Trump's face on the left and Barack Obama's <laughs> face on the right. And I'm like, this is, I. It's like a bad dream. It was worse than that because it wasn't a it dream, dude. <laughs> so, 
but I think they were just as shocked to see me. Yeah. So nobody swung at me. There was no like, they just, you know, they got out of the way. Yeah. And I rode right through them. And I'm like, so now I'm riding through Honduras and like in disbelief that I'm even where I'm at and wondering, like, how do, is, how do I get beyond this, right? No, like, am I really here? Is this a dream? Am I going to wake up? Like, like, did I fall asleep in Mexico and dream all this? Because it was just so outlandish, you yeah. know? Like, literally, I'm like questioning my sanity. So I get to this town. And I'm like trying to use my phone as the GPS, you know? Yeah. And my cardo quit working, so it's not in my ear. And, and then my phone quits working. Uh-oh. Like just what didn't have service or something. Yeah. So now I'm like, are you kidding me right now? So now I'm just zigzagging around this town. I finally see a cop car, a truck, and they're like, I, I, I don't know. They look like construction workers, but it was a cop car. Yeah. Okay. So I follow them to the cop building and I pull right in and they have like this courtyard and I pull right up into the courtyard, like roll up in there because I need help. Yeah. But when you're on a black bike with flames, dressed like I was, I guess I didn't look like I needed help. They looked like I was there to rob the place. And so so the first cop again. that comes out, he's just like, hand on his gun. And I'm like, oh, oh. Fuck, you know? Like, so I'm like, I, I just take my hands off the bars. I fucking, you know, kickstand down. I'm like, start talking. Like, let me take my helmet. I want to take my helmet off. I'm like, trying to tell him I need help. This dude's like, confused yeah and he's like 20 years old young dude and uh you know he approaches me we finally you know he's got his hand off his gun he, he realizes i'm not there to shoot him up and then this beautiful lady walks out in uniform she starts talking to him they're talking to me i try and use my translation app but i don't have service right I'm trying to like now i'm pulling out all my paperwork and uh and i like trying to Tell him I don't have an ID. I just need a police report. And then these other two cops walk out. And then this other lady cop walks out. But she's not in uniform. She's like in like a dress clothes. Like she's like maybe the boss. Yeah. And her and this other, the cute cop, they just start talking back and forth and laughing and giggling and looking at me with googly eyes. And I'm like, this is weird. And all these, all these cops are like no older than 25 years old. Yeah. All young. Oh, yeah. And these ladies are talking back and forth. And then the, the the dressed up cop looks at me and goes, hey, will you marry our friend here so she can go back to Texas with you? <laughs> and you got to remember no, the but... state of mind I'm in. Yeah. Leaving the border, going through a mob of fucking people. With Donald Trump. And, and now Obama. I got the Reno 911 of Honduras. <laughs> like, I'm just fucking in shock. I'm like. You speak English? <laughs> so I tell her what I need. And she's like, yeah, no problem. And take me in there. They write me a police report. I'm like. Did you I, have to marry her? I'm like, no wonder there's people in the streets attacking people. Yeah. Because y'all are not going to do anything. No. Like, these two, like, no. they're not going to do anything. So now Did I'm in there. Did you marry this gal? Hold on. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Because <laughs> I'm in there with this cute lady and this 20-year-old who's doing the fucking police report. And, uh. I'm trying to communicate with this girl. And finally, she calls somebody up and then hands me the phone. And I'm like, hello? He's like, hey, I just want to let you know she doesn't really want to marry you. She's got a fucking husband. You know, this is all a joke. And I was like, you want to marry me right now? I say that to her and she loses her shit, grabs the phone back, you know, like, <laughs> hands me the phone back. You quit with her she doesn't want to you know it was just yeah. it was it was good so i get the police report and i'm like hey where can i stay tonight you know like they were it's so helpful yeah like I, it was it, it just went from one extreme to another right like you didn't know most, what was going to happen the most you anxiety about your safety I, yeah the most <laughs> anxiety like, i've ever had to like friendly folks the, yeah cops yeah super friendly and like people that probably like it's just funny to even see them with a gun like yeah. they're probably like i i don't know it's just <laughs> so crazy so i get a place to stay it which was really difficult because it's easter weekend yeah and uh the first spot i pulled into was like you know a sweet small low-key you know what i when i'm looking for a place to stay when i'm traveling like this the parking 
Literally, like that. That's. Yeah. I don't give a. Sh- I'll sleep on the ground, obviously. Yeah. Okay. But I gotta have like I can't sleep if my bike's not safe. So that's what I look for. And uh, I finally find a place, and they're like, "Uh, well, how long are you gonna be here? Like I'm leaving tomorrow. What time?" And I'm like, "I mean, in the morning. No, what time are you gonna leave?" And I'm like, I- "I'm probably early." Are you going to be out of here by eight o'clock in the morning? And I'm like, what the? F-? <laughs> Never had a checkout at eight o'clock in the morning, but actually, yeah, I probably will leave it. You know, yeah, that was weird. So, anyways, I stayed there, got that thing handled, and the next border was uh, Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Now, Rob told me he does not like to go through Nicaragua. He's been pulled over and hassled many a times in this city called Manasa, and you know, the way he advised it to me, he was like, you should go through when you leave el salvador time it so that you can go through honduras and nicaragua and make it into costa rica before you stay the night someplace like don't stay in honduras and nicaragua well staying in honduras that night you know yeah so now i get to the nicaragua border and as i'm going as i'm traveling from mexico uh, you know, the food's changing, the scenery's changing, it's getting drier and more desolate, you know, from Guatemala, like less people, you know, like the, when I would come through a town, it was smaller, the fucking trees are burned up and, uh, and I, I get to Nicaragua. The guy in El Salvador, the first dude that was really helpful, only gave him $10. He's like, Hey, tonight, tonight. Go on the internet to Nicaragua fucking something and do the paperwork online. Because if you don't, You're it'll get take you three there. days to get into the border. But if you do it now, it'll be fine. And I was like, no problem. And I didn't do that. I totally <laughs> fucking forgot about that. I pulled up to the Nicaragua border. And another thing he told me was you need three vaccinations and a negative COVID test. Greg, I don't have that. I didn't stuff. have any of it. I yeah. didn't have that stuff. <laughs> and I pulled up to the border, like, you know, these guys are going to help me out, right? Like the yeah. the guys that lost my driver's license wouldn't lie to me, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I get to the border. Sure enough, dudes there waiting on me. Actually, he wasn't there. No, I take that back. There was like three dudes all wanting to help me, and I'm waiting for the guy that's like, hey. You know, I know, I know so and so from Honduras. Yeah, so. yeah, that didn't happen. You know what happened? Somebody walked up and gave me a cell phone. Hey, I know so and so, and it's somebody, whoever the guy talked to is on the phone. So now I got the guy on the phone, and then I got the guy in front of me. And the guy on the phone's like, "Hey, this guy is going to help you out." Blah blah blah. But the guy doesn't speak English, so the translator is on the phone, which the phone goes back in this guy's pocket immediately, and he's like. I need a hundred dollars right now. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'll just do this on my own. Yeah. Like I, like I'm not, we're not starting out by me just giving you a hundred dollars. So I start trying to like manage this situation by myself and I get nowhere. Like, it's just, I don't know where to go. There's no science. I mean, there's, it's just, okay. I need some help. He pulls the phone back out, gets the guy on the phone. He's like, you need to give this guy $100. Like, <laughs> Here's okay. 100 <laughs> I'm like, all right, what, are we, what is this $100 doing? He's like, this is for your COVID stuff. I'm like, okay, so I give the guy 100 bucks, And we start figuring out how to uh, communicate without this guy on the phone. So I'm yeah. like, all right, this is your, I'm going to use you. This is, Help me out. Yeah. Give him $100. He immediately gives $100 to some dude who jumps on his scooter and leaves. So I assume this guy's like going to get COVID test, right? The COVID test, whatever. So I get myself stamped out of Honduras and uh, this dude gets on his bike, a little 250 or whatever, and we ride to the Nicaraguan border and go over this bridge. There's like, it was, it was crazy. And uh, the first thing you do is you come to this like, it's literally like a, a, a the size of an outhouse, but it's a concrete building and there's a lady in there. Got to go in there and this is the nurse, right? Well, the guy that took off with the money hasn't come back yet, right? So yeah. just with this guy, we walk up there. Immediately, the lady in this building starts yelling at this guy, like yelling at him. I don't know what she's saying. 
but it's not like I don't know. It's like your mom yelling at you. Or you're like your right. your in law. Like she was upset, but like you could tell there was a connection. Yeah. And uh, and I'm like, you know, she's overtaking bribes. Like she's like, oh, another motherfucker. You know, I don't know what she's saying. Right. But while she starts yelling, she starts writing down on this paper, and I look down at the paper. She writes out a grocery list. A grocery, a grocery list. list, and gives the guy a grocery list, and then she does all my paperwork and gives it to me. So the bribe was. She he's got to buy this guy. He's got to buy this lady groceries, and I get my paperwork. Oh I'm my like, gosh! Oh, that's... <laughs> okay, all right, like whatever. Just trying to survive, right? Mm -hmm. So now we got to go get the passport stamped, and then I can get my vehicle permit. Well, once again, I didn't fill out the paperwork. I go in this fucking building, and it's it's huge, and uh, there's not many people in there. Like maybe three or four. I wait in line. I go to the window, and they're like. You know, show us your QR code or what. I don't know. They, I needed something on the yeah. internet to show them. Yeah. I didn't have it. So, like, go to this website. Go to the website, and it's not working. Like, it's literally, like, the internet's down. So, I go back outside to the guy. I'm like, hey, dude, this shit's not working. He's like, man, just, just chill out. I'll go talk to somebody. And then he leaves. And I'm like, okay. You know, like, I'm just sitting there just waiting yeah. Finally, I go back inside, and I'm like, hey, dude, you know, I don't have this shit. What can you do for me? And he's like, I don't know. He fucking, he, I don't know what he does. He leaves and comes back and says, get out of here. You, you, you know, this, you're, you can't be in here. And I'm like, hold on. And I just pull out money, like right in the middle of this building, try and hand it to him, and then he gets even more upset. And I'm like, okay, so the bribes, maybe you just don't do them like this. So right. I go back outside. Now I'm like, what the fuck do I do? The guy that I just... Like that, that, that bribed me in through the nurse thing. He's gone, and then another guy comes up, and he's now he's speaking English. He says he's friends with that guy that disappeared. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I don't, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, what are we? Gonna do? He's, <laughs> yeah. like, he's like, I'm having my people, you know, take care of this. Go sit inside. So I go sit inside. Sure enough, some lady walks in, walks up out into the lobby from the back office, and she's like, Hey, give me all your stuff. I'll take care of this. I'm like. Okay, you know, so I, I do it. She takes care of it, st stamps my paper, my passport, and I go outside. And that guy's like, "All right, I need another hundred dollars." And I'm like, "Okay, you know, <laughs> I, is this for something that's fixing to happen, or is this for?" He's like, "No, this is taking care of what just happened." Yeah. Okay, all right, so let's go get the vehicle import permit. So we go to the vehicle import place, and he's like, "Hey, you, uh, we need your driver's license and your your and registration." Like and I'm like, I don't have a driver's license, but I have this police report. He's like, well, that doesn't mean anything here. That's for Honduras. This is Nicaragua. And I'm like, I, you were, you were supposed to know this. Like this. Is, <laughs> this he's like, you know, but it's it's okay. It's a business, you know, just a little bit of money. And I'm like, okay, how much money do we need here? It's like two hundred dollars. And I'm like. Okay, you know, like, <laughs> what do I even do at this point? You know, right, right. now, but now I'm like running out of the cash I brought down for this whole trip. Right, we're getting to the yeah. I give him two hundred dollars cash, and I have like, you know, another hundred and twenty or something left. Like, we're we're depleting. You're getting there, yeah. Right, yeah. Money here. Give him the two hundred dollars, and oh, and he made me like go stick it in some paperwork and hide it and give it to him. So he goes in, he takes care of this, you know, with the with the police report and the. And then one of the people from inside, the officials in Nicaragua, comes out. He's got all my paperwork. He starts looking at the Pan America. He's like, what the fuck is this thing, you know? What's in the bags? You got a drona? I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, I looked through my bags. He opens up my left saddlebag. First thing he pulls out is a DJI drone. <laughs> and he throws all my paperwork on the ground. and goes, you can't come into Nicaragua. Throws my drone back to my saddlebag and walks inside. And I'm like... He thinks you're a spy. <laughs> I mean, once again, now I'm just right. like, what? now look at the guy helping me out, and he goes, it's a business. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. How much more money do you fucking want? And he was like, another $200. I'm like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, well, you know, I don't have, I don't have it. Yeah. I was like, I got, I got some money, but. He's like, give me what you got. So I, can, I give him 
I, I literally gave him the last cash that I had on me, and it was not $200. He goes inside, that guy comes out, and he's like, you know, does the stuff, gives me my paperwork, and we're good to go. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So now now I got this guy that I didn't give all the money to. He's like, all right, there's an ATM up the road. And I got all my paperwork. Like, yeah. I have everything. I have all my stuff. Well, I've got to have the police report instead of the driver's license. But I got all the stuff. Yeah. I'm legally in Nicaragua. Yeah. And I've got this guy and this other guy saying, hey, we need you to follow us to the ATM to give us the rest of our money. And then the guy pulls out his phone. Once again, it's the first guy I talked to on the phone. He goes, hey, man, you need to go up there and pull some money out and pay these guys, and then you can give them my tip. His tip? I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> now, these guys are also like, we've got somebody at the next border of course. to help you out. <laughs> And you're like so, 800 bucks in at this point, right? No, I think I was like over five. Yeah, okay. Over five. Yeah. And uh, well, at that border, like right. just that border. Well, no, the string of guys. Yeah, so, it's a lot. Like, yeah. yeah. It costs some money. <laughs> but uh, so I'm like, okay, all right, let's, let's go to the ATM. And we're riding down the road, and I'm just looking at this 250. Well, I'm on the Pan America 1250. <laughs> like, I get out run this dude. Fire breathing machine. Yeah. You know, I get it. I can leave these guys. Yeah. I don't have to stop the ATM. Yeah. But I'm like, who's going to be at the next quarter? Like, who are they going to call? It's not like... I can, and they'll know how much cash you I have. I can't fucking blend in. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Black Pan America with flames, flames on it. Hey, look for the bike you've never seen before. That's <laughs> sick as the flames on it. You're like, yeah. I can't hide. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. You know, I, I go to the ATM. But I didn't pull out all the money they wanted. I'm like, I specifically... Did not pull out every penny. I was just a little bit short, but I wanted to make it clear that, like, was, you know, they got all my money. It's yeah. pretty much the sign. I was like, hey, look. Don't tell the guy down the road. Yeah, that this I is got all another, I got. Yeah. Yeah. And sure enough, there was nobody waiting at the next border. But riding through Nicaragua, it was like the fucking place was dead. Like, dead. The huh. grass was dead. The trees were dead. There was fucking dead cows on the side of the road. And I saw a dude, a, a dead guy. Really? Yeah, I got like a bicyclist. I got who uh -huh. was just laying there dead in the highway. There's people were just like, just like standing just, around, staring at him. Like, well, I don't know what we're gonna do about this. And yeah. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, I just, I'm not, you know, what am I gonna do? So I just rode past a dead guy. Um, and I get to Costa Rica, and uh, there's nobody waiting on me. It was so awesome. Yeah, it was so awesome to like have that. And I was in Costa Rica. Like that's that's where you needed to that be. That was it. Yeah. Like that was. I made it yeah. to the final destination. Yeah. And, uh, and Costa Rica is supposed to be a little more friendly, right? For, for oh, it's, yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, the border was easy. They were super nice. It wasn't crowded. They, like, they, everybody helped me out. They knew what they're know. doing. But it's still weird. You still got to go find some lady under a hut with a notepad and pay her <laughs> right. for insurance. Right. And she just, like, gives you a, it's not even like a receipt, it's like a, piece of the notebook paper that then you take Just to the like official tears office. Off and like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, really? Like, is this this? No, it's just part of the process. And anyways, yeah, I got all my shit cleared up and I'm like, all right. Once again, it's evening time. I didn't, I didn't want to stop four hours from my buddy. Yeah. I could just, so, so like, you're like, I'm just going to go. I'm going to go all the way, dude. And, uh, well, there was a lot of cops. A lot of cops. And just for the record, this whole trip, my bike is in limp mode, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not running all. Well, it's. it's I mean, it's not revving all the way up, right? Because it's in limp mode. You can still go about 100 miles an hour. Yeah. And I was going as fast as that bike would go the whole time. Like, like literally blowing past security checkpoints, like where there's people. So, like, in most of these countries, they have like a, like a police force that does just tickets. Yeah. Like, just traffic. They don't. They're not going to arrest you for weed or whatever. They're just yeah. like traffic cops. And they have like, during Easter week, they have like roadblocks set up. And I think normally those roadblocks maybe aren't there where they probably would with tourists yeah. or somebody on a motorcycle. But Easter week, they're looking for drunk locals. Yeah. Like that nobody gave a f about me on my bike. Yeah. They just, so just wave me through yeah. every time. And, uh, but I get to Costa Rica. And I get like I come to one of those security checkpoints, and it's that night, and this guy can you know pull over, and there's like 
three or four cop cars and a, and a BMW police bike. And I pull over, park my bike, and the guy starts yelling at me for my paperwork. I mean, like, nicely, but just yeah. you know, yeah. a little, little aggressive. I pull out my stuff. I give it to him. And it was the first time I had to show anybody this paperwork that I worked so hard to get it every border. <laughs> right. So I was kind of excited, like, yes, oh, here it is. I got it, you know, <laughs> I can show it to him. Yeah. As I'm showing it to him, the guy that was riding the BMW, that policeman, he comes up and starts making fun of the guy for pulling over a Harley Davidson. Really? Yeah, it was fucking hilarious. He's like, dude, this is a Harley Davidson. Just what let you, him through. Yeah, let him go. <laughs> and then we start talking, you know, doing motorcycle talk. I was like, this is awesome. That's fun. This dork just got in trouble for pulling over a Harley Davidson. <laughs> so anyways, I, I, I move on. and Dude, the ride to meet my friends. So since it was Easter week, where he lives in Tamarindo, it's, he's like, dude, this is going to be crazy. We're going to leave town and go camp on the beach. So, dude, this road, it was so sick in the full moon, and I'm climbing mountains. Like, there's a mountain range in between the beach and the main road, and it's just this dirt road. Climb the mountain, and the and moon's Man. out. I can see the ocean, like, far off in the distance, start smelling it, yeah. hearing monkeys yelling at me. I'm like, you know, this This is why little, I just A little, little different than the masks. Oh, just, <laughs> this is why I rush down here was to like get to this point yeah. and it was it was just it was so awesome and i come the road dives down i finally get to some sand and i'm like oh i'm, I'm so close <laughs> and i pull up and my buddy terry is just standing there he's got a drink in hand it's joint in the other hand <laughs> i'm like oh my i haven't seen terry in years yeah. and it was just it was so awesome to put that bike on the kickstand and know that I'm not even going to get back on it for a couple of days. Right, right. And uh, dude, friendly face there. To, friendly yeah. face, food, drink. We did acid under a full moon on the <laughs> beach of Costa Rica, and like, sur I surfed for the first time. Oh, fun! This is an out, uh, like a world-renowned outlaw chef cooking for me. Yeah, on the beach of Costa Rica. So I'm cool. like, oh, it Pan was America, awesome. Pan America's there. Pan dude, there's fucking palm trees everywhere. We got a ham. Like it was. It was amazing, amazing. Yeah. So I go to talk to this guy, right? I want some advice, you know, some some, uh, some opinions. I want his support, and uh, and he gives me everything I want, you know, and it's, it's, it's great. And then he goes, you know what? Here's the thing, Dan. You just rode this Pan America down the Pan America Highway to Costa Rica. It's probably, you know, there's probably nobody else that's done that on that bike yet. Yeah. And I... I like pull up the map, the Pan America Highway. I literally rode the Pan America Highway from my house to Costa Rica. I did, you did, I did it? Not on not, 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 not planned. Not just even did it. Just, yeah. I just did that. And he goes, but here's the deal, Dan. Pan America Highway doesn't end in Costa Rica. And you got to go all the way. I'm not saying you should get divorced over it, but this is what you do, isn't it? Yeah. I'm like. You're like, I do have to keep going. I guess that is <laughs> what I going. like. And I, it literally, when he was saying this, I'm like, I mean, I've, I've, I've already, I've talked about this for years. I've wanted to do this, and up until that moment, I, I wasn't even, it wasn't even like a thought, like I wasn't even considering. Yeah. And as he's saying that, like, not only did I know that, like, I'm like, that's what I was gonna do. Like, it was already late. Like, yeah. You're like, yeah, of course. Of course, I'm here. I got to do it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how am I going to tell my wife about this? You know, like, yeah. yeah. Yes, you're right, Terry. So, yeah, we and we and we this all happened. That happened the first night. Like, I was going to ease into what I came down there to tell because I didn't even tell him why I was coming down. I'm just like, hey, Terry, I'm coming to see you. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, by yourself. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to ride a motorcycle down there by yourself. I'm like, yeah. He's like, that's awesome. You know, like yeah. little did I know he knew more about what I was fixing the experience. Than yeah. I did. But uh, it was all, it was just amazing. So yeah, he tells me that we spend a couple of days there. I'm like digesting how to communicate this, not only to my wife, but like just, you know, everything else I had planned for this year. Like, right. this is not like, right. This is a diversion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had some things going on yeah. and I got a bunch of red, like, it's not like I got, I don't know stuff that I, I got really rad planned. Yeah, and now 
I got something even more rad that I had. Like not you, only you do it's it not now, even right? an option. It's just like this is what I'm doing. And and I came to the realization after like thinking about it. I even wrote. I'm like, if I'm gonna do this, I need to like this has got to be written down. Yeah. Like I got to document all yeah, this. Yeah, once so in a lifetime experience, right? Start writing yeah. about the shit on the beach, trying to figure yeah. out how I'm going to communicate. And I'm like, here's the deal. All these commitments I made, if those people don't understand what this is, what I'm doing, then those people are not on Team Danger anyway. Yeah. So it's like, this is just... I'm just going to do it. My wife better be on Team Danger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I hope she is on Team Danger. So... You know, we spend a couple of days there and I'm like, all right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, they got a spot in Tamarindo. I'm going to ride my bike to Tamarindo, leave it there. I'm going to fly home and get my wife. Yeah. I tell her to get her shit ready, you know, and pawn the kids off because I'm bringing her back to Costa Rica. Before, I, that's so, the way to do it. Hey, you got, you, you tell her on the beach, right? So what I did <laughs> is I told her, I just wanted her to come down here and, and see Terry and hang out on the beach before I ride back to Texas. Okay. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that, but that's what I did. Yeah. Right? So I go home. Oh, so then I so we we spend our week on the beach or four days. Let the Easter crowd clear out. Yeah, and we go. We decide the morning we're going to Tamarindo. Oh, so in that morning we're like we're gonna do a photo shoot, right? I got these guys set up. There's this sick ass palm tree, and like goes up. It's like from here to that door, and it just it's like parallels the ground. And then it does a right turn and comes up. It was like from a storm years ago, it got knocked over, knocked over and then just grew up. So there was like this perfect jump, like set up to jump over this thing. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, we're, I, you we're guys, doing this, yeah, right? I'm going to get all the cameras set up. You And my buddy Terry's got his friend there. And I'm like, you guys are all like, and they're fucked. They're down, you know? Yeah. So we pull out the drone. We fly it around. We get some beach shots, you know? Costa Rica shots, and now I'm like, all right, let's do this jump. And I, I go get the bike. I kind of like get a trail, kind of like mapped out as because I'm like, I'm only doing this once. Yeah. You know? Like I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> this is no. We're not getting redos. So I park the bike and I'm like walking the trail up to this jump to hit the palm tree. And uh, all right, everybody's ready to go. I got a GoPro set up. Walk back to the bike. And it doesn't start. Uh oh. It just doesn't. It, like, it just it, just won't turn over. It just does some weird noise. Yeah. It started. It's not. Like it turns on, and I can hear the the pump is making a, a weird noise. Remember when I was in Idaho? Yeah. I was like, hey, listen to my pump and make sure that I get. The, it, yeah, that doesn't noise, have one. Yeah. You know. So I'm like, <laughs> this is a normal noise. Yeah. So I immediately just assume that this fuel pump's not doing what it's supposed to, and there's some sensor that's not making it start, or I don't know. You yeah. know. And I also am thinking I've been traveling through Central America. Well, fuel in that thing gets iffy. You know. Oh like, yeah. So I'm like immediately I'm like. There's something, you know, something clogged, something going something's on. Something's going on. So, well, I guess I'm not hitting the jump. We're taking the bike apart. So now I'm on the beach. We've been hanging out next to my bike for four days. Yeah. Now it's time to leave. And well, it won't we, we start. have to take my motorcycle apart. <laughs> so now I'm on the beach, pull the tank, pull, do the air box filled with shit. I mean, like sucked in a bunch of crap. It looked like the beach. Yeah. It looked like the beach, dude. It was insane. Yeah. I, was, I can't even believe this thing is running right now. Yeah. Take the gas tank off the air box. Fucking pull the pump out. I fucking hit up Zag. I hit up your guys. I'm like, dude, I've got a situation here. Like, <laughs> I need a pump. I, am I need <laughs> far from home right now. Yeah. I need a pump. I need a fucking starter. I need like, you know, I just was. I, was, I don't. Hell, I didn't know what to do. You know? And we got it to you though, right? Well, here's the deal. And shipping. I asked my buddy, I'm like, where do we ship this to? He's like, oh, well, we don't, we don't, we don't ship don't know, stuff yeah. here. Yeah, like, we just <laughs> don't do that. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going home. You know, let's, let's just tow the bike to y'all's place and I'll can fly home and I'll get everything I need and, and come back with my wife. Yeah. You know, and, and, uh, you know, figure this out. And sure enough, I did. I, we towed the bike in, do this tow driver. Oh my gosh, dude, this, the French guy, where we got the bike strapped in on this big tow truck, and we could have gotten like a smaller truck, but I'm like, dude, I want this. 
I want this thing to be secure. Right, I've seen right. the way people drive around here. This thing to be flopping around in a fucking quarter ton truck. You know? This needs to be legitimate, yeah, right? Yeah, so we got this, I mean, a full-size tow truck. Yeah. French guy. I'm in the front seat. We're fucking driving. He's like herding cattle and, you know, <laughs> trip. And uh, we stopped to get gas. And he goes, uh, uh, or I go smoke a cigarette. He fills up and we leave. And he goes, you didn't get any beer? I'm like. No, I no. Yeah. I, didn't get I thought he was talking about it for me. Yeah. He pulls over to the next place and goes inside, buys a six pack, comes back out, gives me a beer, cracks one open, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> we're in Costa Rica, yeah. you know. So the tow truck driver is just steadily drinking beers all the way four hour trip back to Tamarindo. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> you know, maybe the fucking small truck might have been the way to go. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So we get there. We I find that my buddies have got a spot. Their friend has a house with a gate. He's got a couple of motorcycles. You know, it was a secure place. It yeah. wasn't like inside a garage, but it was underneath a patio. Bam, stash the bike. Fly back to Texas and uh, get my wife. You guys send me everything I need. And at that point, we thought it was like a, uh, you know, it was just throwing a bunch of coats. Fuel so pop you starter. Threw, you, sent, you guys sent me a bunch of, like yeah. a bunch of stuff. And I was like, the first thing I would like to do is, is put a battery on. Because yep. what did I do before I left? The battery plus battery. I put a fucking <laughs> batteries and bulbs battery in the motherfucker because I was thought I was tr I was preventing something like this from happening. So you guys sent me a, a fuel pump, a starter solenoid. Uh, I hit up Harley Corporate. They sent me like a was it a variable valve timing something because that was a throwing a code and uh, you know I get all this stuff. And tire, you guys send me tires as well. Yeah. So I got battery, you guys send me battery, tires, fuel pump, all these parts. And I got my wife and, you know, I'm like, all right, man, here's the deal. You don't get, like, you, this is the bag you get to pack because we got to take parts. I mean, yeah. I'm paying extra, yeah. you know. And my buddy Randall, Randall's, Randall's a saint. He's got a first class. So I really get to like, you know, see, I've explained to him what I've got to do, you know. Yeah. And he's on team in danger, right? You're trying to butter your wife up. But we got to butter the wife up a little bit. We got like, to make this, you know, because, you know, I'm obviously not going to lose my wife over this. Yeah. Like, I don't give a yeah. about anything except yeah. for that. And uh, so, you know, we get the first class flight. And I'm like, you know, how, you know, how do I, or do I do it on the beach? Like, you know, of course I do it on the beach. But, you right. know, yeah. it's there the whole time. And uh, so, anyways, we fly with all these parts down there, get to customs, and they're like, they want to charge me uh, tax on everything, right? Yeah. Which I did not think about ahead yeah. of time. And uh, so I just told them it was all like worth about 100 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Two brand new tires, a battery, they did, they didn't a toolbox. No, they did not. I was like, oh, this is so awesome. So I get in there and I, and I tell my buddies, Terry, and uh, why can I not think of this other dude's name? Uh, the long gone gringo. Uh, it's terrible. So I tell him, like, hey, I got these parts, but I don't want, I don't, I would love to take my wife on a motorcycle ride, but I want to spend a few days with her before I, I don't want to take her down there and just go work on my motorcycle. Right. Because so, this may not, it may not be just a simple day. And once I get started taking shit apart, anyway, so I'm like, I hang out with my wife in Costa Rica and it was amazing. Costa Rica is beautiful. Tamarindo, we, she served, we ate great food, you know. I explained to her what was going to happen, and she's and and, and she knew before I even put her on that fucking plane. The, yeah, that you she, were going to keep going. <laughs> she knew I she was not going back to Texas. Yeah. You know, uh, so she took it. You know, she did wish I would have just explained. You know, told her sooner. Yeah, you know, yeah, waiting or building it up. You know, my wife's amazing, and uh, so she's on Team Danger. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, we got. I got to go work on my bike. You know, yeah. a couple of days. Get like, I can't just be down here with a bike that's not working while I've got stuff to fix it. Yeah, because uh, I also wanted her to go back with the tools. You know, that you because you guys send me specialty tools as yeah. well to to do the starter solenoid. I think it was. So you know, I wanted her to fly back with them because the shipping thing is it's just down there. Yeah, it's really, it's really yeah. bad. So I go back there and I and I. First thing I do is I put the battery on the bike. Everything works. Yeah. Literally, just replace that battery with a Harley Davidson battery, and the bike fires up. Dude, we were so excited. We were just so excited. 
Oh my gosh. I was so excited that that's all it was. But you know, you just, you just you don't, don't I don't know. Yeah. I definitely don't know. And yeah. you know, I'm not in a place where there's no, like, the, there was a dealer, not a dealer, there's a, a service center. In Costa Rica there. Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't have anything. He couldn't, he told me he, he didn't know anything about the bike. He didn't have the computer stuff to help with the bike. So it was like, and I asked him about parts and he was like, dude, a battery, a battery costs like five or 600 bucks. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm like, whoa, I could fly home. Hell, I could have bought a battery, flew home, and flew back. <laughs> That's right. Quicker and cheaper than yeah. buying a battery there. Yeah. Uh, which is insane to me. But that's just the way their taxes work or whatever it is. And while I was, well, I'll get there. So, yeah, and put the battery in. Bam. Did I get to take my wife on a ride in Costa Rica on the Pan America? We're just go to the beach. We do some things on the beach. You know, it was, <laughs> yeah. it was fucking amazing, you know? And, uh, and then I put her ass on a plane and sent her back to Texas, said goodbye to my friends, and I'm headed south. And Costa Rica, please go. Yeah. Please go to Costa Rica. It was, it was absolutely beautiful. It was so amazing. There's animals everywhere. There's like yeah. monkeys and crabs on the roads. There's they got these sick, and they got this road that runs along the coast that was just like it was like the perfect adventure road. Like river crossings uh, right. i would suggest not doing them when i did it <laughs> by yourself because right. you don't know how deep it is like there was a couple of times where i'm like did you drop your bike in one of them no nope. no no got no, through them all not in costa rica not in costa rica not, not in costa rica <laughs> oh my gosh this is insane we're only in costa rica right now <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah the fuck it was just awesome you know like there are surf towns everywhere. There's a lot. It's a. It's a. It's not a real cheap place because there's a lot of tourism there. But yeah. there's also a lot of like, you know, awesome things like good food, good places to stay, yeah. cool spots. Uh, the the people were awesome. There's fucking bikes everywhere, and the riding was sick. Found some like dirt bike tracks, and it was so awesome. I did. I did. So there's this road. They're like, all right, I'm trying to get to this place called Santa Teresa. There's this guy named Forrest Minchinton. He's got a place down there called the House of Somos. And he does, he, Forrest like races the Baja, he's a dirt biker, surfboard shaper. His dad's a legendary surfboard shaper. And they have like this hostel, restaurant, bar, Santa Teresa. That's where yeah. I'm trying to go. And uh, there's like a, a way you can go that's pretty quick. It's like a, a road on the beach. Or you can take a couple hours to go. Yeah. I'm like, take the quick way. And sun's going down, you know, dude, yeah. we're on the beach. So I'm going to this road on the beach, and I see a dude on a dirt bike with a surfboard on his dirt bike, and he's going to surf. And I stop and talk to him. Rad dude from like Idaho who just bought a house down there. Huh. And he just goes down there and surfs, rides cool. his dirt bike to the fucking point. That is cool. It was so sick. The dude was <laughs> rad, but he was like, Yeah, that road. I'm like, I asked him, like, hey, is the road good? Is the is the river washed it out? Because it's like the beginning of rainy season, and oh. you know, it gets to a point where you can't cross that spot on the beach. And he's like, he's looking at my bike, like I can't tell if he's like <laughs> looking at my bike, perplexed, because you know, what it is, Harley yeah. Davidson in Costa Rica right yeah. now that he's never seen before. He's only seen pictures of, or he's like looking at my bike, not sure if it'll make it. Yeah. And then he goes. Nah, man, you should be fine, dude. You know, it's sand, but, you know, just stay on the two-track. It'll go down, and and then you just cross the river. You know, if you see somebody, ask them, though. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, well, if you, I mean, if you see somebody, they're just, you know, see if the road's good before you keep going or, you know. Because it could you, change quite a bit, right, yeah, during rainy season. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It could change every day. Yeah. He's like, and if you, when you get there, if you, if you, if you can, like, wait for a car to go through. So you can see exactly where to cross this river. Yeah. So he wasn't like instilling me with a bunch of confidence in this road. But the sun's going down. I'm trying to get to this place before. Because all the rivers I crossed already, you just duck down and like it gets darkish. And it's like, you know, yeah. by my fucking self from Costa Rica. Yeah. So I take off down this sand road. Now, this was like the sand at the mint race, like that in deep sand there's only a couple of sections in the mint where it's like deep can beach sand yeah 
this road was like 12 miles of the deepest sand. Like thick, thick. It was so <laughs> deep, like where you have to be going fast. Yeah. On the back of the bike, and I'm ripping, dude. Sun setting, the beach is over here. There's like this fucking rolling grass hills and that build up to mountains off to my left. I mean, it's the most picturesque thing ever. So I'm like enjoying it all. And then I enjoyed it too much, dude, and just fucking wiped out. Dude, yeah. caught a rut, launched off the bike, it slams down. Oh, it's just like no fucking way, man. <laughs> Because I, I was, I'm at one point, I was like, if I have to start, like, if I have to go from a dead start in this sand, like, I don't it's know. It's not going to happen. Do yeah. it. Yeah. Now. Bike's down. You got to get it up. Bike's down. Weird position. Finally get it up. Uh, after I get all my together. And uh, I'm like, all right, all right. Fucking gun it, right? Just went in doubt, throttle yeah, out. That's right. In the sand. So I just fucking send it. And sure enough. Way easier than I thought. The thing and picks up traction and gets right back on top again. And I'm like, sick. It wasn't very long after that. I right back down again, <laughs> dude. Like, I ended up dropping that bike about six or seven times in yeah. the sand. Yeah. And I am, I am spent. This is at the you get end of the day. exhausted pulling the yeah, thing up. Ex and, exhausted. Yeah. Just hell. Even if I yeah. wasn't picking it up, just riding yeah. through the sand. Been riding all day long. Been on dirt all day long. Yeah. And uh, the sun's going down. I'm still not where I want to go. Still got a questionable river crossing coming up. Yeah. And I'm like, if I, you know, and I'm not even halfway to the river crossing, you know? I'm like, what if I get there and this river is like blown out and now I got to, I got to. Come all the way back, backtrack. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So like, and go I, and go the long way in the dark. So I'm like, all right, I, I, I just need to go up there and find out. And sure enough, man, I finally make it there. Uh, the last section, it, it, uh, it started getting wet. Or it started getting closer to the beach, so the sand wasn't as deep. But I, sure enough, I get there and the, it's, I, it looked blown out. I didn't see anybody crossing. I didn't see a possible way to cross. Maybe it was because the river's muddy. Yeah. But it's like. Do I want to take a chance with the ocean? Right. You know, like the Wash ocean. the bike out to the ocean. The ocean that has ties that come in and out. Do I really want to? No, I'm going to go back down that sand road. So you would turn around? Another fucking 10 times or some shit. Yeah. Like, I am fucking beat, dude. And I finally get off that sand road. I get to the fucking main road. Bunch of more river crossings. Make it to Santa Teresa. And I'm just like. Oh spent totally spent at that point right yeah. but it was so sick like yeah. like you know you're riding your bike down this in the in the dirt like the main dirt road it was like it was a nice i mean it's yeah. not like a fucking yeah. trail like it was an enjoyable dirt road it had ruts it was just technical enough where you had to pay attention the fucking animals i mean it was just awesome even though i had just exerted all my fucking energy on that damn beach dude yeah. you know like yeah. in the sand but you know it just it's it's it seems like the whole trip has just been a bunch of way up way down you know but like, that's what makes it memorable right you oh remember it right well, it those experiences those, you'll remember it now it makes you that never forget it it makes those like times yeah the, the, like yeah the lows make the highs higher yeah you know it's like the comparison well, and they it's, just like embed them in your brain, though, too, right? Like you remember them. And what's crazy about it is how close together they are. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. like one day's great and the next day's bad. No, it's like one hour is fucking in, like, unbelievably awesome. And then the next hour, I'm like, how am I going to make this? Yeah. I got my, <laughs> Bikes broken I got, I mean, down. I got people chasing me. Yeah. Got, it's like, yeah. I mean, every day it's like that. Uh, man, made it Santa Teresa through the riding was leaving there. I mean, it was awesome. But I wanted to get to, to uh, Panama, my yeah. buddy Rob. I wanted to go see yeah. Rob. So Rob, right now, what is today? It's like August something. He and the fucking Biltwell team are fixing to ride a, eight Pan Americas 
to Alaska. I've seen this, yeah. So he's right now he is tricking out eight Pan Americas for them to ride. Yeah. But uh, he's at this point he hasn't even seen one, you know. So I'm like, I gotta go show Rob this yeah. bike, you know. Yeah. Like, and this thing's been everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Like, check it out, dude. This is what I've been through, you know. And these guys have been helping me out. This is what we've done. This is what we've needed. And and, and really, it was like, you know. It would, yeah, I just need to go see Rob because Rob kind of inspired this trip too. Like he was who I was going to go visit back in 2020. I was like, yeah. do the fucking Oaxaca, Mexico, Mezcal Moto Rally and then go see Rob. Now it turned into go see Terry. And, uh, you know, so I go, I, I make it to Panama. And he told me the border crossing in Panama. The border crossing in Panama. I roll up to the border crossing. There's like a gate and guards and they're like, blah, 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 blah. You got to go to this building. So I backtrack, go to the building. So, and then I have to go find a bank or someplace to pay six bucks or something. Like, no, it was like three dollars. Yeah. Three dollars. Yeah. I'm looking for this place and this little bitty fucking, calling it a town is, it's over. Right. It's, it's just like some buildings. I'm looking for this thing. Next thing you know, I'm in Panama coming up to the backside of that gate and those guards are looking at me. Like, how'd you get here? Huh? Yeah. Like, I'm like, <laughs> what the Rob told me, he's like, you can't, you don't have to do anything in Panama. You can just ride in, but, you know, get that done. So anyways, the bank ended up being a fucking hardware store. Yeah, how, hardware would you, how would you know? Like right? I could have bought fucking feed and shots for my cows <laughs> right. while also paying the export or the, you know, the exit tax right. of the country, which is six bucks or something. It was like $3. It yeah. was whatever it was it was just like where it was at it's crazy so i can make it to panama and uh through panama it's dude, beautiful right i went to this volcano oh my gosh dude and waterfall i mean it seemed like every day i'm like dude what could po i couldn't possibly get cooler than this right. you know and then you get to panama and it's like let's just keep going <laughs> now costa rica i don't know the panama it was just different yeah. but it was like it was just still on the same level. Yeah. And I finally make it to Rob's house. And it was awesome once again to see a familiar face, you know, like yeah. give him a big hug. And he's like, hey, my buddy's got some KTMs. You know, I bet we can go, you know, he could take us on a little tour. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So these guys on KTM dirt bikes take me on a dirt bike ride on my Pan American. Right. And I've seen you ride, though. You can handle that. I will. <laughs> kind of far away you know when <laughs> right. i was riding with you it's like you got connections right there <laughs> close by okay i'm like dirt roads away from a main road that's really far away from any help right you know? but i got robbed you know like yeah so we take off dude we just start cruising down the beach they took me on this epic epic fucking ride once again river crossing we're like riding up a river you know like in boulders i mean i fucking, literally just drop my bike in the water i looked down and my i was knee deep in water my bike's laying on its side like ah oh, you know like which i wasn't the first time that it happened but it was the first time outside the, the country right outside right. of america that that's happened and uh you know let's pick it up it started making some weird noise my chain was loose so i can you know I, I uh moved my rear wheel back and uh, come to find out that some boulder I hit broke my left foot control. Oh, really? I just wow. and snapped it in half. And, uh, you know, we tried to weld it with JB Weld and surfboard. Uh, what do you call that stuff? Fiberglass. Oh, okay, like yeah, yeah. JB Fiberglass Weld Concoction. Rob was super, you know, helpful. And, yeah, I broke that thing. We rode mountains. We, God damn, it was gorgeous. That's awesome. Rode horsebacks, I'm galloping down the beach, bareback on a horse. I'm like, it's this. It's like I'm dreaming thing. again, right? I, no, <laughs> it was so insane. So from there, I wanted to go get to Panama City where I could leave my bike at the Harley dealership and fly home. Yep. So I made that trek. Uh, dude, another thing, going down the Pan America Highway in Panama, Rob and many other people were like, the cops are out. Like what, they're everywhere. They don't have fucking radar detectors in Central America or Mexico until you get to Panama. So, sure enough, dude, I'm hauling ass. Get stopped. 
show them the paperwork. I'm like, sick. Yeah, I got it. You know, here it is. And yeah. They let me go. And then I'm on the I'm on the pan. I, it's crazy having that cardo going and it's like it keeps out on the Pan American Highway. I'm like, the Pan Americana. I'm like, oh my God, I'm working on the Pan. Like, it's just, it's yep. just crazy. You know, like, yep. all that's happening. And, and I'm, and once again, I'm speeding at all times. And there's a car coming up behind me. And, and you know, I'm, I've done this before. So, like, it's good to get behind somebody else that's speeding. You know, right. let, let them be out front. So, yeah. there's, a, there's a car coming up behind or behind me. And I think they're doing that to me. So, I slow down. To let before I even slowed down, this fucking thing passed me, and it was a hearst hauling ass. So I'm like, I just tuck in behind this guy, and sure enough, dude, we're coming up to a turn. And he slows down before we get around to it, and there's a cop there. Like this motherfucker knew. He knew there's. He a cop knew there. where all the cops were at and was slowing down. It was like so sick, and he was using the two lane highway or like the, you know, it's two lanes south, two lanes north, the both lanes doing the turns with this fucking hearse, you know, just like, it was awesome following this dude hauling ass. But we'd go for, he would slow down. We'd be going for a stretch hauling ass and then he would slow down and I would forget that he's my cutie and I would yeah. pass him. And then you're like, wait And then there's a, a cop. I'm like, you know, I get back behind him and I wave at him like, hey, <laughs> dude, I, you know, sorry I didn't take your cue. It was really a sweet exchange, like with that driver for about two hours. In a, in a hearse. In a hearse, yeah. <laughs> hearse. Hall, and that fucking casket was rolling around. In I bet. If there was a casket, that fucker was hitting side to side. <laughs> it was awesome. And then I made it to the city, uh, went to the Panama City Harley Davidson dealership, and they were they were fucking super stoked, super rad. The owner met me there on a Saturday or a Sunday evening, took me to the airport, uh, but I flew home. I don't know what I did. Did, did I get anything? Oh, you guys sent me a a left, a left foot we control. We did, yeah. Got you your guys left send foot me a control. brand new one, and we weren't sure if, that you could even get it or if yeah. it was going to be there in time. So I took the other one to my buddy uh, Justin Kelly. So I think that was off my bike. Oh, really? Yes. Because <laughs> they're one, back ordered. Right? Yes. <laughs> well, I still have it. No, I got somebody that blew up a Pan America on the Mint. Yeah. This last year. No, that's so we were well, we haven't even a... gotten there. Yeah. The left foot control is brand new in the yeah. box. Oh, brand new in the box. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, we're I'm getting the sure. right I'm hand not control. Sure how, oh, the, yeah, it's the right hand control. Yeah. That's right. No, I broke the left hand. Yeah. We haven't even, we're so far yeah. from that, dude. How long have we been talking, dude? Where was that? Well, I fucking flew home from Panama. Yep. I got, you guys sent me a brand new foot control. I had my buddy Justin fix the foot control I broke. And uh, S squared away with the wife again, made sure she was comfortable. You continuing on? No. <laughs> No, I went on an epic chopper trip with my friends. Oh, <laughs> no, so you didn't square away. You're like, I'm, no, I'm home, but I'm out of here. I did. It was terrible. I'm like, all right, babe. I've been planning the Kickstart Mike's dream trip for a minute. So we took the choppers and rode the most epic trip to Colorado and in New Utah, Mexico. New Mexico. And oh, it was sick. Million dollar highway over to Moab down to Mexico. Oh, that's beautiful country. It was so yeah. sick. And then I get home, I'm like, all right, I'm going back to Panama. <laughs> <laughs> and I fly back down there. Uh, the part Justin made fit right back on the bike. So now I got the brand new spare and then the reinforced welded one. So anyways, yeah, now I'm like, I'm at the Darien Gap. You know, how do I get across? I'm trying to go to Columbia. And uh, dude, there's, a, there's not as many options as there used to be. Yeah, the Darien Gap, like that's a dangerous area too, right? Supposedly impassable. Yeah. Supposedly. Supposedly. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely not impassable. Yeah. It is not advisable. Yeah. Not advisable for yeah, sure. I, I think I, they say it's impassable because it's not advisable, right? Yeah. Now. Not at all. I mean, thick jungle. There's people that walk it every day. People that looking for new lives. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I didn't know how I was going to do it. You know, there's, you can. Ship your bike a couple of different ways with a plane or with a ship. And I found this guy named Alejandro who's got a company called Overland Embassy. And that's what he does. He specializes in transporting vehicles from north to south. And uh, the original idea, I wanted to just go down there and find a pirate, you know, and just find somebody who has a boat, pay him a grand, throw my boat on the ship, put my hammock up, cruise to the Caribbean. Yeah. 
Well, the thing is, is the people that are down there that make that those trips, they're hauling guns and drugs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and if you do find one of them that can haul you down there, at any point he gets a call to haul guns and drugs, they just get rid of you. You know, like, right. here's an island, here's a bottle of water. We'll see. Him. I got to go do something more important. Right. right. And I heard some crazy stories about people. Just know, getting stranded, right? Just getting, you know. Yeah, some wicked stories. But Alejandro's like, man, we got a, a, a container shipper. You know, we'll throw your container, put it on the boat. It'll be in Cartagena in 12 days. I'm like, cool. 12 days. I'm like, what about flying? I can Surely we can put it on a plane, right? And I can get on the same plane? He's like, no. But we can put it on a plane, and it'll be there in like two days. And it's twice as much money. Another 600 bucks. I'm like, I will spend... Whatever money I save shipping it on the boat, just waiting on the fucking bike to show up, you know? Right. So I was like, put it on the plane, dude. And sure enough, I went right into Bogota, Colombia. Uh, bike showed up, DHL, get to the, you know, the freight. I go, <laughs> there's like this big warehouse, DHL, this, you know, yellow and red, right. whatever they're wearing. They all stopped what they were doing. Like all 30 or 40 of these guys. And then... Four of them all fucking wheel my bike over to me. And they're all there because there's this fucking, you know, it's the loading dock. Yeah. There's no, you know, oh, they had a ramp. That's where the, some guys got the ramp ready. But all, it was so sick to see all of them like, and they started yelling and screaming. Like, like all paying attention to the bike. Yeah. Like, and, yeah. This is, the, you know, all right, we're, this is, help this dude get his bike out of here. Yeah. Oh, that's so sick. So now they're all there and they're like, all right, do you want to write it down the ramp? I'm like, Fuck yeah, I want to write it here. Fucking film it, you know, I get some cameras yeah. in my phone. And I go to turn the bike on. Nothing. Won't start. Not a fucking, well, it wouldn't even turn on. Yeah. It would like, so I, you know, I pull the main fuse. Yeah. Stick the main fuse in there. And the screen fires up and turns off, like letting it, so, like letting you know that power got connected. Yeah. And then you turn the switch, nothing happened. Turn it off, turn the switch, nothing happened. Turn the switch, like, Nothing was happening. And now all these people are just standing around like, well, like, what are you doing? Right. What are you doing? I'm <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> a chopper. I know exactly what to start looking at this thing. I'm like, if the switch doesn't work, I, mm. you know, and, uh, that's, that was the beginning of some weird issues Yeah. on the right hand control. You know, coincidentally, that's the same control that hit that truck. The first week I had it. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, and I'm like... So maybe some connectors or something in there that were starting to go haywire. Absolutely. I mean, it's got to be. It's yeah. got to be. But at that point in time, like, what, you know? They ain't got a hand <laughs> control in DHL. No. Talk no. No. I, I did find out that the dealership in Bogota, Columbia, that I didn't even go to, has some super rad guys that have helped me out a ton you know, just with like coordination and logistics down there. And I really wish I'd have gone and seen them, but dude, I'm not. Those cities, Bogota is beautiful. Yeah. But I like dirt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you got it going. Yeah. Yeah. Fire. It, it ended up firing up. Everybody's like, Whoa! Oh. <laughs> it was like a very climatic moment. It was sick. Yeah, everybody's was excited. Like, yeah. And all of a sudden it just flipped on and started to work. And I get a big cheer, fire it up, ride it off the ramp. Bam, I'm in Bogota. And it was so awesome. Columbia was like, God, it was so beautiful. The weather was beautiful. There's mountains and shit. Crazy art everywhere. Uh, dude, I started staying at hostels. Oh, man. People from all over the world in those hostels, right? Dude, so yeah. fucking sweet. Yeah. Like, Bogota, Columbia. Like one of the most dangerous places in the world a couple of years ago is now filled with beautiful world travelers. Yeah. Just walking around with all their belongings on their back, <laughs> using the public transportation system, just backpacking around Colombia. And beautiful women from Turkey and Israel and in Europe and the Netherlands, like just checking it out. Just walking around the country. <laughs> I'm like oh. This can't be very damn like you know like <laughs> it just was it it was just shocking you know like I mean I you've heard of people like going to Europe and backpacking around Europe yeah no, they're doing that in Colombia like going yeah. from farm to farm and oh it was just it was uh 
just so crazy down there. It's like, just, it's just unbelievable. So I get my bike and I'm like, all right, you know, and, the, and during that, that transition right there, like getting my bike to South America, I'm like, what route am I going to take? You know, cause I'm not just the Pan American highway from my experience, like was just like the highway. It's just like the interstate in America. Wow. Yeah. I don't ride the interstate in America. And this right. fucking bike wasn't built to ride the interstate. No. Okay. So that's when I realized that I needed to, you know, like to start mapping things out. So what I did is I picked the the five most dangerous roads in South America. And that's where I put my pins. Yeah. And uh Columbia had one of them. Did you go run it? Oh my God. Yeah, it was so fucking sick. And what's, do you remember the name of the road? Yeah, the Devil's Trampoline. Devil's it, Trampoline. It took a while to get there because in Colombia, they got like an election going on. I get a call from the Bogota dealership. He's like, dude, you do not need to be out traveling this weekend. Like, because of the election. Doesn't go right. You know, there's people a, are going to riot. Yeah, there's a, there's a businessman and he like, uh, you know, he's not a politician and he's real conservative. And then there's this other old guy who's like selling lies and, you know, the country's divided. If this guy wins, then there's liable to be riots in the streets. I'm like, are you, I just <laughs> left America, you know? Like, so I found a sick ass hostel thanks to Maggie Hicks. She, oh, she used Maggie, to live yeah. down there. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. And uh, she was like, go to this place called Guatape. And man, it was just like this lakes and islands and this giant fucking rock called El Pinal. And uh, I found a hostel with a recording studio and a mini ramp to ride skateboards on. Very cool. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So I hung out there for a couple of days and like, that's really when I decided that, that I, that how to map out my trip. Yeah. Cause I, you know, I didn't really know where, what I was going to do except for go to the bottom of the planet. Right. You know, where the, Dolphins turn to penguins. That's right. Maybe try and get on Antarctica. That would be cool. So you're mapping it out and just trying to figure it out a little bit more along the way, right? Yeah, That's so kind of what you do. In dangerous roads. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I know that the death road in Bolivia, I was like, I really, that, I think that's what triggered it. I was like, oh, I need to ride that road in Bolivia I've heard about. So then like an article comes up, like the fucking five or 10 most dangerous roads in South America. Oh, the ones in Columbus. Like this is got to do it, dude. This is this is how I map out my trip. Yeah. And dude, just getting to the Devil's Trampoline, Columbia is like I went through like coffee fields, like the small farmer coffee fields. I went to the big farmer coffee fields. It's like, dude, the fucking, the coolest thing in Columbia is I got signs for like the animals. Like you've seen bear crossing, yeah. elk or moose crossing. They got like gator crossings, cat crossings, where I could, like and they're like cool pictures. Yeah. Like like if it's almost like tattoo flash. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's like a rad looking animal that yeah. might cross the road. Yeah. Big fucking snake, tigers. Uh oh man. I wish I had taken more pictures. Possums, like weird, you know. Yeah, like, yeah so I'm like I'm going to hit the most dangerous roads in South America. And the first one was the Devil's Trampoline in Colombia. So, you know, I put that on the pin. I can zigzag and back and forth. So they got these two mountain ranges that run through Colombia. And there's like the Magdalena River, which is like their Amazon. And then the Cacao River, I think it was. And then there's, you know, just these, this mountain range that separates those two valleys. That's where there's two valleys that run through there and the mountain range. And I just kept going back and forth across it. Gnarly roads, beautiful farms and like you know i spent two weeks in columbia and i think it, i spent about fifteen hundred dollars well wow. staying at some of the sweetest places hostels with people from all over the world like learning about other places to go to and telling them where i've been and like just being able to communicate because right. i don't speak the language very yeah. well more more english speakers there it was, it was great so then i get to the the uh the trampoline of death uh the what there's another road they call it adios mi vida it's like goodbye my life road you know, like, oh, wow. and, and the whole way i'm going and there, you're like yes give me some of that <laughs> well the whole way i'm like uh when people ask me where i'm going i'm like oh i'm going to the supposedly most dangerous road in colombia like kind of not giving it to credit it deserves because yeah. when i got there it was so 
in the SIG. And I will tell you more about it later, but they, they hauled four bodies up out of the valley, just dead bodies. I got to race like 50 motorcycles on a cliff, you know, like came to a sliding stop on a cliff. At one point I'm in the rain, laying on my back, and, you know, trying to unjam my chain because of lack of maintenance and enjoyment. Right. And, uh, you know, I made it through there. And the next country was uh, Ecuador. And I knew there's a dealership in Quito. So I wanted to get to Quito and stash my bike at this dealership and fly home so I could go to Sturgis, right? Because right. that's what you do when you're an American and you ride motorcycles. Go to Sturgis. And I wanted to get home to celebrate the 4th of July with my family. Celebrate America in America. And I get to Quito. And it's like, boom, it is fucked. Gas stations are just backed up. So they've been, they had been protesting for days at this point. And so I wasn't even sure if I was going to go in there because they'd been putting up roadblocks and shit was getting out of hand. Yeah. But the president lowered the gas prices. The morning I woke up right at the border. So I'm like, sick, you know, like he's making the people happy. They're going to stop blocking the road. So I go into the country and sure enough, the first gas station I see has got like a three mile line of people waiting to get gas. But I'm like, it's cheap now, so they want to buy it. Right. Right. No, no it's not, not cheap. It's not, no, <laughs> no, that's not why. They were in line because that place had gas. Oh, gotcha. Because the roadblocks had stopped the gas trucks from going. So I, I keep so everywhere is out. I, I keep going. I keep going. I see the couple gas stations, they're all super long lines. I stop and get some breakfast and talk to these guys. I'm like, hey, dude, what's going on? They explain to me, like, you know, it's just tough to get gas. But if you need gas, we can help you out. I'm like, yeah. So this dude takes me on a little rip. Dude, we pull up on the side of the road. They got like, you know, like laundromat bo- or uh, dishwashing soap bottles filled with gas. And I pay like five bucks a gallon for some bootleg gas. Sweet. I'm filled up. Take off to Quito. I ask him, I'm like, hey, is this route good to go? And they're like, yeah, no problem. So I take off to this route, dude. You know, I could see like burn marks in the road, debris pushed off where they had like gotten these roadblocks out of the way. And, and uh, dude, oh, dude. So I'm going down this road. And there's not a lot of traffic out, like kind mm-hmm. of eerie. And there's a fucking bus. And there's a dude chasing the bus. And I'm like, hmm, that's weird. And I look back and there's a 10 foot pile of dirt in the middle of the road. And I'm like, oh my God, I did swear <laughs> away, just barely missed this thing. So I'm like, okay. So they cleared most of the roadblocks, but there's still some debris. I need to be on my toes. Yeah. Keep going. Next couple of gas stations is like ghost town. There's nobody there. Nothing's going on. I'm like, this is weird. Get to the next town and there's like lines again, but they're waiting in line at the gas stations that don't even have gas. They're like in line waiting for the trucks to show up. So now I'm like, all right, this is, I can't keep going. Like I got to find a place to pause. So I found a hotel and like this farm. Dude, it was sick. Coffee. It was a coffee farm. They had food growing there. They had wine. They had water. They had places to stay and nobody was there. And the owner, except for the owner, and he was from California. So he spoke English. Oh, awesome. His wife was at the airport in Quito where I was headed. And they were trying to figure out how to get through all the roadblocks. So it was like, oh, man, I just posted up. We waited for everything to chill down. And, and I got impatient. So after a couple of days, we're getting close to the 4th of July. I'm like, you know, I'm I like, got to get out of here. Got to get out of here. And I see a helicopter. I'm like, dude, I'm going to leave my bike here. Book me a helicopter. And he's like, done. So we got the helicopter booked. And I'm like, just going to stash my bike at the coffee farm and fly home. And then they came to a peace agreement. And the roadblock cleared up. And I rode into f***ing Quito the next day. There you go. Like, just everything was back to normal. But on the way to Quito, there's still like just rubble on the roads. There's like burn marks from the tires, you know, and. Dude, experiencing the roadblocks before I found this place, the dudes with the katanas and the machetes and like, you know, and they weren't like violent towards me. Like there was no. Just mad though. They would no. They were mad at you. you. Yeah, they were just like, Like they wanted to make a point. You know, they're like, no, we know you want to go through here, but we are trying. This is the only way we can get attention. Yeah. You know, what's crazy is like, it works. I get to keto, right? Took me like four days, right? Of dealing with this city or the country that's yeah. like there's a dealership there and i'm like oh the harley like when i make it there they're gonna help me out right yeah <laughs> this dude oh my gosh he didn't he did not want to help yeah. he did not even want to see me yeah. but i think it was because he was so flustered from the country being 
shut down for 18 days, his dealership being closed. Yeah. He wasn't sure if this was really the end of the riots or protests. And he's like, man, I can't, you can't leave your bike here. I can't help you. You're like, I may not even be open in three months. I don't know what's going on. Right. It's, you know, the country is, who knows? And I'm like, well, okay. So then I talked to the people that work there. I'm like, all right, here's the deal. I got some things I need to do to my bike. My hand control is acting funny. I got some great people in Idaho Falls. They're going to take care of me. I'm going to bring this stuff back and I'm going to fix my bike. Can you guys just plug it into your computer yeah. and just flash it? And they were like, oh, yeah, no problem. I'm like, well, f that was That's easy. That's all I need. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I call up in a, in a rental company around the corner. This guy I met named Poncho and, and uh, Gambo. And they're like, yeah, you can come over. We stashed my bike in their office. I jumped on a plane that night. And here I am in Sturgis. There we are. So when are you planning to head back? Uh, September. September. Yeah. Right on. My wife's birthday is on September 3rd. Fly back to Quito. Put the bike back together. I got the controls off your bike, yeah. off the showroom floor. Yeah. Or in the shop, wherever it's at. My the, personal bike. Your personal bike. My personal hey, bike. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, put those controls on. Some tires. Uh, hopefully that dealership's still in business. Plug it in, hopefully flash a computer just because I think it would be good to flash a computer after yeah, there's a new to there, there's a new update that yeah. came out too, yeah. And then I'm gonna ride through Peru and the next dangerous road is in Peru and then you know, who who knows? Uh, Bolivia and yeah, Chile. Bolivia, and... Death Road's next, and then make my way to Ushuaia, and then hopefully go back up into Brazil to see the flat out Friday guys in Sao Paulo on a fucking ride there that by way cool. of Ushuaia. That is cool. It would be cool to see people from Milwaukee and Sao Paulo when they fly there. And I'm like, I just rode my motorcycle. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Greg, yeah, I want to thank time. you. Before we yeah. go any further, I just want yeah. to thank you so much of for course. being so much help. These guys right here, Zach and Jamie, yeah. have been great. Zach, he, he lets me just like call him up and yell at him, you know, yeah. take out my frustration yeah. at life and the planet. And, and then I know else. he's just like, hey, what do you need? And yeah. our guys like pull it yeah. together he's just and like, send it down. Yeah, yell at me all you want, but what can we do to help? I'm yeah. like, okay. It's, it's just been awesome. Yeah. You know, like I, uh, you know, it's just, I'm stoked that we've established this relationship. Yeah, and, me too. Uh, I hope it's, I hope it's working for you. I hope you're as yeah. stoked as I am. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, and as you know, we like right out of the gate when we were talking in Wyoming, like, you know, we we committed as a dealership to make sure that we understood the Pan America. I mean, we understand the Harley Davidson motorcycles as well, but just based on where we are in the country, like I wanted our technicians to know everything there was to know about those bikes, our sales team, parts guys, just so that they could, you know, people I break down. I hope that they're learning from my they are. experience. Yeah, people break down, They you know, things happen and we've seen a whole bunch of them in the shop, so. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen a whole bunch of them in the shop. Take well, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, just... At the dealership. We, yeah, we have yeah, a whole bunch it. at the dealership. Yeah. They, they they have made it like a destination to say, hey, let's go oh, see these cool. guys. Yeah, so we've seen them from Canada, from Florida, from all over the country. So they're just swinging by on their travels. They are. Just to say what's up. Because yeah. we've seen you on the internet. Yeah, and saying, hey, we want to go ride that road that we saw Greg and Dan go do. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So Dan, we both had a Pan America for about a year and a half now. Uh, I think you got yours just a little bit before I got mine, even though I'm a dealer, but I took our first one, put all of the accessories on it. Um, I started seeing your videos get posted out there right away as you got flames on yours, you got hit by the truck. The but... truck really sent me to the next level. But if you, you know... really want to grow your numbers, run into something. <laughs> run into something, yeah. <laughs> put, put, your, <laughs> put yourself in front of a truck. <laughs> But the bike held up, right? I mean, I... I fixed it with a beer can. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Literally, fucking beer can, heat shield. I was riding the next day. You got hit and just started running yourself, like, right away, right? Just making sure nothing's you know, broken. You that's what I was taught growing up. That's what yeah. I've been teaching my kids, too. Is you just got to run it off. Yeah, so you ran it off, went back, picked up the bike. Yeah, actually, another guy picked it up for me. Yeah. I didn't even have to pick it up. Fired right up? No. No? No, I was scared to press the button because I thought it was broken <laughs> i was on the hill so i just rolled down the hill like in disbelief yeah that i just ran into a truck well he kind of ran into you no, no <laughs> you didn't run into no, him I he ran, ran into i <laughs> ran into him okay I, this was not that guy's fault yeah. i knew exactly what was going on and he had no place to go except for left i yeah. just wasn't thinking. and that's when he decided to pass him yeah yeah not very smart but no, i just took off and like just rolled down the hill in disbelief 
And then I flipped the switch and hit the start button. It cranked right up. Yeah. And I was like, oh, God, that's awesome. So lots of miles, lots of experiences since then. Mm -hmm. um, you and I connected after Sturgis last year. Um, my marketing team, team reached out to you. You rode all over Idaho, met up with me. We went did the Grays River in Wyoming. You know, did some podcasting. But even since then, like you've put a ton of miles on that bike, done all sorts of things with it. So, you know, what are what are some of the things you're loving about the bike? Dude, I think really what I like the most is everybody's reaction to it, you know? Like pulling up, they're like, what? Like, especially in South America and Mexico, like they're like, what the fuck is that thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like it's a Harley Davidson and they're just minds are blown. You know, it's got flames on it. It's literally, I can ride anywhere on it. I've, <clears throat> I've put it through so much and it's gotten me out of so many predicaments. Uh, you know, following a trail on the map that goes through the mountains, it's a little bit different than like a road map, you know, like yeah. you don't know what you're going to get into. And I've gotten myself into some really dicey situations and it's gotten me out of all of them. And the ratings on those, like on the different off-road apps, they're like all over the map too, just in terms of whether they're accurate or not. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. So like you say, you never know entirely what you're going to get into, but you've done single track, you've done like a whole like timber track, like boulders, all sorts of things with yeah. the thing. And it just, it's taken a beating it, and it keeps, keeps on going, it right? It keeps going. It really does. Uh, I've, I, within the first couple months, I rode it through. I did not plan on riding it through. And it, it just went right through it. So speaking of it being something that like attracts people, um, I remember the first trip I was on um, just outside the entrance to Arches and we're going to go catch some really kind of cool shots with the Arches and everything with the bike. And there's somebody that mouths like in the car next to me and pointing like, that's a Harley Davidson. Yeah. <laughs> so there's still not a ton of them out in the wild there, even though it was, a you know, Harley sold them in pretty big numbers last year, but it's still kind of, they're still kind of rare to see them out there. Yeah, especially the places I've taken them. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, Central Central America, South America. Well, you know, even in the states, yeah. like when I did the Colorado BDR, you know, climbing the top of Red Mountain or California Pass, the guys on the dirt bikes would be like, "Holy shit!" You know, like I've seen them in the magazines or on the internet, but to see it at the top of the mountain is pretty wild. Yeah. Now, as you know, they've got a few little quirks that they've been working out, right? I mean, the bike performs well, but any, you know let alone like first year model, but a first like entry into a segment, like a manufacturer is going to have a bit of a learning curve. Absolutely. What are, what are a couple of things that, uh, that you've noticed that, Hey, if I could change this, I would do this or like common things that you've heard from other riders out there that are going on with them right now. The stuff I've heard from other riders has been stupid stuff. Honestly, like just, just complaining about weird things. Uh, I, I don't know that I would do, so the, I guess the computer, it seems to be a little bit smarter than it needs to be, you yeah. know, like yeah. if the battery's not completely full, uh, you know, and I thought maybe the battery being down low might be a problem, but I have submerged my bike many of times. There's several pictures of and, you out there doing that. <laughs> you know, and maybe that is the, I mean, really the only battery problem I've had was when I put a untested battery in it, like. I pulled a good working battery out of it and put in a batteries and bowl battery just because I thought it'd be a good idea to put a fresh one in before I left the country, which turned out was a bad idea. Uh, and, you know, my right hand control is acting funny because I hit a truck, yeah. you know, a year ago. Um, like I thought the, f the foot controls were going to break. Like looking at them, it just, they look kind of like, I don't know, like if I dropped it, they were going to break. Like they weren't strong. But you've dropped your bike a ton. The, you've hit rocks. Yeah, you've done yeah. all sorts of things. I broke right? it when I hit a fucking boulder. You know, like, and that wasn't the first boulder. No, no, <laughs> like, that was a year after me dropping it a lot. I dropped it off a bridge upside down in a river. Yeah, and you know that was awesome. Fucking Mike Lichter, we're taking photos. I dropped the bike off a bridge. He doesn't even take a photo. He comes over to help me. I'm like, do your job, man. This bike was upside down in the river, you know? <laughs> and you know? it fired up. Yeah, I just flipped it up and rode it through the river. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've put it, I have definitely broke some things. Yeah. But I honestly, you know, I, I don't think I, it's all because it should, like, I, you couldn't have built something that wouldn't have broke. Like the right. times I broke it, you know, and, there were some things when I first got it. You know, I got a friend up in New York, uh, Tim. He's got a company called Gigacycle. Yeah. And he has a machine shop and he builds 
you know, he's got the capabilities of building almost anything. So I took some of the parts and I'm like, hey, I think I'm going to break this, you know. Yeah. Since 2020s, parts are just hard to get with anything, much less a new bike. So I'm like, here, you know, back engineer these things and be able to make them if I need them. And I haven't had him. He hasn't made me anything. Yeah. Like, literally, I mean, I don't have any real complaints with it. Well, you're seeing the aftermarket, though, too, like start to build things that people need based on how they're using it. Are you? Right? Yeah, I am. So like Toro Tech seeing it. <laughs> I haven't seen Tora any Tech of that. doing some of it. Um, you know, um, there's different seats, that, that easy stuff like that. But, you know, I, I think it's not too long before you see like upgraded triple trees and things like that because, you know, they're just cast right now. Yeah. And so, I mean, a guy like you that's riding it really hard, at some point you're probably going to, you know, need to upgrade that component. Absolutely. Uh, some of the foot controls, you know, um, seeing a few manufacturers do stuff with foot controls, different risers, grips. But that's just any motorcycle out there, right? I know. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> I honestly thought there would be more aftermarket support by now. And I know that, you know, manufacturing things is difficult right now. But <clears throat> one thing that's really cool about the bike is I see the potential for somebody to make a tank. Yeah. You know, or a different fairing. You know, like somebody can make a different shape, you know, like where you could customize it, which is what people with Harley Davidson's love to do. Is they like do it. Give their bike their own look. And that bike, unlike any other adventure bike, has the potential to, for you to be able to you know, really make it your own. Yeah, and uh, express I mean, I yourself, with, right? Yeah, I did it with a paint job. Yeah. But I think, you know, the tank, yeah, somebody's going to make another tank that's going to be a little different. It's going to be cooler or different and a fairing. I think the fr the whole front end, like a company could come in like, you know, like GigaCycle makes front ends for other bikes. Like people are replacing their street bikes with different front ends. Yeah. The Harley, you could do that as well. I mean, you could put a full on, you know, I just think that the, the opportunities to customize it are a lot bigger than any other bike in that category. So if they were to do a version two then, which at some point they will, like mm -hmm. what are the, you know, maybe top three recommendations you'd have? Navigation. Yeah. That screen is worthless. Yeah. Like it, I mean, it shows me how fast I'm going. Uh, I mean, it does, it obviously does other things, but you know, there's no, that navigation now, given I, I quit trying to make it work after about like two tries. Yeah. Uh, that, the navigation, I, nothing real. I mean, yeah. honestly, like yeah. I have, no, but I feel like I'm also a bad person to ask that because, you know, I was, I'm completely content with this. <laughs> that's you know, right. like, I mean, <laughs> the take it as it the is. The technology <laughs> that's on that thing and what it's gave, like, it's, uh, you know, I feel like that bike's capable than most people will ever, you know, more capable than what anybody really needs or that most people really need. So how many miles have you covered in a year? Not as many as you would think. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think there's more than 15 on it. Well, that's pretty big though. I mean, you, you got another bike that you ride around a ton. So yeah, that's quite a few miles. Yeah. I think I'm like 13. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're on the way to it's and it's been through like eight countries. Yeah. So 13 with you is probably like 50 on that bike though, right? No, it really is. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I don't know what a lot of other people have done, but I bet that I have more than 50% off-road on that thing. And then probably 25% of that has been dirt bike stuff. Like yeah. not, not like dual sport adventure, like straight up dirt bike. So do you bring any like maintenance stuff with you, you on the road? I know some of those adventure bike guys have like a whole kit dedicated to it. I get the sense that you just kind of ride it and then. No, 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 no. I bring underwear. Underwear. Socks. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the bike. Yeah. The bike. <laughs> no, what do I keep? I keep, uh, what do I, oh, I, some chain loom. Yeah. You need that, right? So you don't blow through the sprockets. Yeah. I mean, I have like an extra foot control. You know, I know I don't have a lot of feedback because I feel like it's just done me so well. But what would you change yours at all? What would you do differently for next year? So I painted a tank, yeah. right? You saw mine. So I had a gal uh, out of Salt Lake named Paige Macy that does a lot of custom bikes. And mm -hmm. she was thrilled to, to do her first Pan Am and, and did something cool for me. Um, but, you know, I'm a tall guy, so I'm into, you know, different types of controls. So taller risers. Um, 
thicker grips. I haven't found thicker grips for them yet. Um, and then with big feet, you know, foot controls, things like that, just extending the, uh, those controls out uh, would be helpful. But there again, some of the aftermarket's catching up with adjustable controls and different things. But, uh, you know, taller seat. But outside of that, I've, I've left it. A you taller know, seat? I like a little taller seat. Wow. 36 inch inseam. So Is that because like legs. when you go to stand up, you, your butt goes so far down? Yeah, I'm like well, a little bit too far down, right? And a little cramped up. So even with highway pegs, you know, I, I just like a little bit more height. Than this so you seat. know what I've been running on mine? <clears throat> it's like a, what do they call it? It's a wild ass. Have you seen this? It? like I a seat know. cushion, like air gel pad seat cushion. Oh, I'll have to give it a try. And it just, it raises me up even taller. You know, and I put, I put some, some uh, pegs on the, the crash bars. Have you added any extra pegs to yours? I have not, no. I added them and I don't ever use them. Yeah, so some people swear by them, other people don't use them, and you know, put them on there, don't use them, and they get in the way. I think if you, you know, lay the bike down quite a bit, but um, yeah, I mean, one of them I, I started out with hard bags, mm -hmm. not paneers. Yeah, hard bags. That's right, dude. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, but I have on one of them switched back over to the soft bags just because right. I'm riding a lot more on the dirt with what it. What do you like? So, what do you What do you think? Soft they're great. Bags soft are bags are great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, because the hard bags, um, you know, you lay the bike down a couple of times, they're not going to close the same way, seal out, you know, the elements and stuff like that. So if you're planning to take it off road and think you're going to lay it down, soft bags are the way, way to you go. You know where else those soft bags have come in handy for me? It's splitting lanes down there in South America. Like I got to this one spot, oh, I could hear the clips like scratching two cars on either side of me as I'm like dragging the bags through these things. And if those would have been hard bags, I don't know that it would have, you know, the, the resistance would have been greater. Yeah. Uh, but they've been pretty handy in traffic as well. So I'm getting ready. I, I just handed off one of my bikes to this guy named Spencer Luxak, who's done a lot of stuff in the motocross world with dirt bikes and these bespoke builds. And he's really tied in with a lot of the pro level riders in that world. And uh, he's been wanting to do an adventure bike and just add certain elements to it from a performance standpoint. Yeah. And so uh, he just came to my house and picked one up and was riding it around. And What's he wanting to do to it? Doesn't know yet. Yeah. He doesn't know yet. He wants to spend some time with the bike, but you know, watch for that in the next few months here. We'll have some cool stuff for ho hopefully. Yeah, that'll be cool to see what yeah. he does. So is he gonna jump it? Is he gonna he take may home jump a motocross it. track. They, his family has a motocross track. So yeah. Iron have you Morse, seen the guy who did the, the backflip on the Panama? I did. He's bonkers. What the fuck? <laughs> Big heavy. But what bike. about the dude who raced it uh recently? The the Spanier. Yeah, they're showing up in yeah, they're showing up in races and things. We we actually um, uh, sent one of my bikes down to uh, race the mint, um, and that's where we found a weak point on the the triple tree. But look, the guy that was running it like took a jump at over 100 miles an hour and came down pretty hard on the front end, and it didn't take long for well, it just to kind of. You know, split. a lot of people do that though. Yeah. You know? Hit jumps at 100 miles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many people yeah. do that. <laughs> Maybe in our world. <laughs> I. Uh... I'm shocked that I haven't broke anything like that. Uh, you know, nothing that I have broke has like left me stranded. Yeah. You know, which has been awesome. Uh, oh, you know, one thing I would change, actually. No, I just thought of this. The freaking air box intake right behind the front wheel. You know, if that if there was just more there to block it and the front fender was longer. Yeah, that would be crucial. That's true because things get caked up on the radiator. Oh, yeah, if you, stuff yeah, there too. when you go through mud, you fill that radiator full of dirt, and then it doesn't cool the motor off. Yeah, so you got to hose it down and yeah, which I yeah. think a, a longer fender would solve most of that. Yeah. Have you guys done anything? Like I've seen there are front some fender extensions. There's some extension kits. Uh, mm -hmm. Harley doesn't have anything specifically. I've also seen people put spacers in there too, just to lift that fender up off the tire a little bit. Um, what for? Well, because if they're in mud, it just gets caked up really quick, and then the front wheel start, stops moving. Dude, if they got that much mud, that bike is too hot to ride. Yeah. It's got to be. I'm yeah. telling you, because it would be all up on that thing. You know, that's another thing is, uh, what do you think about all the giant, the white box specials from China, all the parts that they're making, you know, that people are buying and putting on their bikes? I mean, I haven't got any of them, but I see people on the internet buying them. Yeah, they're they're buying them and uh, have you bought any of that shit just to see what it is? No, but I've heard I've heard good and bad, but mostly bad about some of that stuff because it's just not the tolerances aren't there. They don't fit quite 
you know, the way that they should, just like a lot of those parts. So yeah. um, I'd stick with a reputable group to, to put any aftermarket stuff on there or, you know, Harley's partnered with some different groups as well. I mean, I know that skid plate when we did a service for you in Idaho Falls last year, like we could tell that that thing had taken a beating off a couple of boulders, but still were able to pop it off, drop the oil and put it right back on. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had to replace a bolt. Had to replace a bolt. Remember that S bolt? That was... That's right. That's the one that had a little hard time coming out. Yeah, yeah. But the, but the plate did its job, right? That's Absolutely. what it's there for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the plate's been good. I I mean, I've honestly been disappointed in the aftermarket community. Why have they not embraced this motorcycle more? It's coming because it, there's so many things that they could do, like that, like even a fender delete kit or a, a tail light tail uh, tail light delete kit. There, yeah, yeah. Like it's the, a fender delete, yeah. Fender delete, like, because yeah. I mean, you know, this what is that's like for like. DOT regulations, the license plate's got to be back there, but nobody wants that big piece of plastic hanging off their bike. Right. That's a pretty simple part to make. Yeah. And that's one of the first things people do with sport bikes too, right? With any any yeah. bike that has yeah. that, they take it off. Yeah. Yeah. So are you going to, do you think you're going to touch Antarctica? So the bike's in Ecuador right now. <clears throat> There's potential. I've looked at the logistics. It's like, yeah. you know, the bike getting to Antarctica, that'd be tough, but it would be so rad to just like put it on the ice. Right. But from what I understand, you have to like wear suits and, you know, it's very sterile down there. Right. The bike not, might not make it, but I would like to go, you know. While so I'm you're going to get as close as you can though, right? In Argentina? Up, yeah. yeah. Go down to Ushuaia. Yeah. To the end of the world. And, uh, you know, and then possibly si send it to Africa, you know, if the bike's still like, I'm not going to send it home, you know, yeah. if the bike's still in good shape and like capable of continuing on just like, ship it somewhere else yeah yeah when they continue the ride yeah so i've seen a couple of them t uh touch the arctic circle this year so people going up like you know from the states through oh, yeah. canada and alaska and hitting the arctic circle what but i haven't seen it in highway i forget what it is but i haven't seen anybody do what the you're dalton doing highway. the dalton highway you're right yeah. yeah yeah so a couple of them getting up that direction I think Kalen Thorin's doing that. Yeah, uh, the rest of the Built here. Well team. The Built Well team. Yeah, Harley's given them some bikes. Mm -hmm. You're doing this on your own bike mm -hmm. and going the other direction. So I'm sure it's a first. I haven't seen anything out there. Well, there's a, there's a couple from Sweden right now touring South America two up. Are they? On the Pan America. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, uh, right now they're in, they're probably fixing to cross into Ecuador and they're going to spend the next year. Just zigzagging across, zigzagging around South America, and they uh, they already did. They did a big tour over in Europe. Uh, super nice couple. Uh, I've only communicated <clears throat> via internet, but hopefully have them on the podcast and we can cross paths in South America and I can hear about their experience. So one of the things I like about you, Dan, I'm wearing a, a shirt, right? For a, it's a, your Pan America shirt, but you run a. a shop called mc shop mc shop tees mc man. shop tees i subscribe i can't <laughs> that's it i love every month when the package comes i know what it is and but, but you don't know what it is i don't know what it is yeah, yeah. it's a surprise it's a so, t-shirt but yeah so it's like it's a surprise it's like a the cracker jack box and mm -hmm. figuring out like hey what is it that uh is in here but it's supporting local shops all around the place so Absolutely. um helping build awareness about the community but also these these shops they're op often run on like thin margins and it's you know you got to have a real passion for for what you do they, they all do uh they got to have a passion you know nobody gets into motorcycles to make money i mean i guess some people do but the shops that i'm featuring man it's because they love keeping people on the road and in the wind because you know, it's, it's good for the soul. And those shops are important <clears throat> to me and other people that like to ride motorcycles. So I like to do what I can to support them. And, you know, I found that tapping into the audience that listens to me and talking to the people that I talk to, you know, I can share these shops that I find. I'm actually, I found one in a, found a couple on the road, but there's one I'm going to feature out of uh, Costa Rica. It's a surf shop. That's cool. But they all, they, every one of them had a motorcycle there. And I'm like, that's good enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're getting featured. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, most of them are just small independent shops from around the country. And I did this Danger Dan American Highway uh, shirt because people have been asking for a shirt. And I just put it out through the club. And, you know, doing this trip through South America, you know, I'm riding the Pan America. I rode it down the Pan American Highway to Panama. And uh, I'm going to continue on, but I'm like, I'm not really going to ride the Pan American Highway. 
Yeah. You know, I'm going to, well, I mapped out the five most dangerous roads in South America. So yeah. I, uh, it's an adventure bike. You need I, to do that. Right? I know. I coined up the, the slogan danger Dan American highway. There you go. And that's what I want. So I did a shirt to commemorate it. Right on. Yeah. So if you want one of Danger Dan's shirts, uh, they come out monthly, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're these don't. If you want one of those, too bad. Yeah. You missed out yeah, already. Missed but there out. might be another one. <laughs> there, <laughs> but I the should. monthly shirt. Yeah. Twenty five dollars. Twenty five bucks a month. MC Shop Tees. You can listen to the podcast on any podcast app to learn more about that. Well, thanks for taking the time to tell us about your your ride down the. I wish I had more down like feedback on the motorcycle, like good or bad, like bad. Well, hey, you're like uh, it's running, yeah, right. It's doing its job. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, check out Danger Dan on Instagram as well. Uh, keep up with all the stories. It's awesome to see you getting you, out Greg. there and and living life each and every day. Thank so you. it's an inspiration to those that want to get out there and experience life in a different way and just experience the world. And if you can, follow along. <laughs>